Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka. 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 It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Baka Baka Baka. We are an anime podcast. Every two weeks, we watch an anime. We come together on this podcast and we discuss it. We turn our discussion over to you, the listener, to join in. Tell us where we're wrong. Tell us where we're right. Or just share your honest opinion because all opinions are welcome here. Um, that's the whole point of the show is that we just three idiots talk about a show and we welcome all other idiots to, to join in. Today, we are talking about one of the biggest hits of last season, Spy Family. Just the first core. We're going to be... Probably coming back for the second core later, but it hasn't released as of this time, so there's only 12 episodes to talk about. And to do that, I need the help of my co-host. First off, we have the money penny to my bond. It's Jeremy. How you doing? I am doing pretty good. Uh, the the three-week delay between these gave me an opportunity to explore so many different things. So I, I, uh, I've been having trouble trying to settle on which one would be interesting to talk about, but... I discovered a YouTube channel. I think this one's going to win. I discovered a YouTube channel called Nerd Explains. And this guy covers like horror movies and how you beat the situation of the horror movie. And I absolutely love it. Like I have watched a uh, uh, alien creature like grow up on a on a space station and how everybody like tries to survive. How, a guy stuck in an elevator during a zombie apocalypse like there's just so many crazy things and seeing how he breaks down like okay you need to know this about reptiles you need to know this about you know if you if you got a a a water behemoth that's going to come out and stalk you at night but you know you can get a shark and and hang the shark up why don't you fill the shark up with like broken coral or something so that it it eats the shark and then you know disembowels itself basically or cuts its own mouth or, or throat up or stomach up um absolutely up my alley love it um, if you, if you, if you aren't as interested in horror movies for actually watching them so much as thinking of them as a puzzle and how you would deal with that puzzle, uh, you might like the channel nerd explains. I, I don't know if it's the same channel. I've seen something similar. Uh, too many of his ju- suggestions were sacrifice your teammates. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, eh, I don't know what that's I haven't about. seen I uh, haven't seen any of those suggestions yet, but he's got a lot of videos, so I wouldn't be surprised if we're just seeing different batches. Yeah, I think it could be a, a different guy too. Yeah, those, those are some. All right, we also have the Pam to my Archer. It's Jason. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> Lovely. Um, Pam! <laughs> here we go. Uh, do it. I was doing fantastic. Um, <laughs> I uh, I broke out the pressure washer. Um, and it, that simulator. is one of the most... Huh? Pressure washer simulator? No, the a- actual pressure washer. <laughs> That's not it's amazing fun. how satisfying it is to uh, use that. But anyways... The, what I really want to talk about, though, is uh, Alien Fireteam. Uh, that game is amazing. Um, it's got like a bit of the horde thing going on, but it's got very much objective based. Like you've got to move um, and like playing off each other's abilities and stuff. Uh, plus, the story is like pretty, pretty good. Like it, it's very faithful to um the older aliens movies um so it's it's a it's a lot of fun definitely worth uh worth a take so that's the one that you suggested that we play together right yeah so it's a three-man team and you depending on your role will depend on what weapons you get and as you go further into it you get access to more and more um but it's cool because there's one part where you're going through and you see these you know, (laughs) things going up the wall that you've never seen any of the movies. And it just kind of leads into the actual story of the game. And you're just like, Oh no, something's going bad. And of course it's always humans doing stupid stuff. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Um, oh, we can weaponize this, <laughs> but it's much deeper than that. And it's uh, it, it, uh, I, I'm really digging it. This is from the Alien series, right? Or movie. It's based off the movies. The yeah. universe. OK, cool. Yeah, yeah, so it's probably universe. like a predator alien hybrid or something crawling up the walls so far there's like um you know there's there's a whole bunch of different alien yeah. types yeah so uh some right of on. them are harder some of them are faster cool so to, to make some reference to what jim was talking about so right now we're doing our baka adventures on youtube where we play through as elden ring as megamine and ichigo and inosuke uh, and okay, run! <laughs> <laughs> so we have to like stick to their fighting styles and abilities in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've been talking about, like, hey, wh- what are we going to do after Elder Ring? Do, do we just stop? Do we keep going? Jason suggested this game. And we're like, well, that's not an anime. <laughs> we want to yeah. keep it anime related. It is an anime podcast. <laughs> but I thought of something, guys. Which and is not it? even for just this game, for, for other games. If we watch an oh. anime that has a lot to do with any game, like, hey, we watch a game where they're fighting aliens or in, oh, in a very yeah, yeah. similar tone. Then we could just be like, hey, yeah, for like a week or two, just to go along with the upcoming podcast. We, we do that. Just throwing that out there. I like that. Uh, so, well, we'll see. That's there, pretty there, good. That's pretty that, good. That's <laughs> an idea that's growing that we're having fun playing. But you should definitely check out the Bach Adventures if you want to watch me play a guy who's bare chested and die <laughs> over and over and over again. Stupid wheelchair. And I will, I will get explosion magic. I will. I promise. It's just going to take me some time. <laughs> for those calling out, Jeremy, doesn't have explosion magic. You're right. Good for you. Yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm trying to find it. Let's call out Ichigo for using healing magic. Yes. <laughs> How dare you? He has right. a healing factor. <laughs> and it affects everyone around him. <laughs> right. <laughs> gotta get At least I didn't get run over by chariots over and over. That's true. <laughs> At least not on video. Hey, <laughs> let's let's not talk about that. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Let's go back to our actual podcast. Good plug, guys. Good plug. Yeah. Uh, my name is Troy, and uh, the three week break was my fault because I went on vacation to Seattle, got to hang out with Jason. Uh, we awesome. played Imperial Assault, and because my kid wanted to play, I went out and bought Mice and Mystics, the board game. Uh, and that has been a ton of fun to play through with him. We lost, but <laughs> we're going to try again. Uh, very, very family friendly, but very good theme and a little like an interactive storybook for the role playing. Very good stuff. Uh, and I watched season three of The Boys and I've seen things that I can never unsee. That show goes places. It is well done. It is well acted. It is one of the best shows on television. The first episode, I had my jaw dropped and watched it through my eyes because it was so disgusting. And I, I've seen a lot of stuff in my old age. You mean you watched it through your hands, like between? Yeah, like which, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. covering <laughs> my eyes. What you meant because you said watch it through, through your eyes. <laughs> Sorry, watch through my fingers, peering through okay, my. Okay, there you go. Uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, <laughs> It uh, makes you think about Ant-Man and sneezing, and um, it's rough. It's how rough. you would possibly, like, uh, constrain him. <laughs> how you would... I've watched some summaries and some some clips. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it kind of takes you... Remember how everyone talked about how Ant-Man could beat Thanos? Yep. Yeah, they, they went there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, one thing I... Good. My favorite moment of the weekend, though, was there was an event in our imperial assault game where troy looked at me and he goes show me in the rule book where this happens i do not believe you you are cheating <laughs> and did you find it yeah oh yeah it, it was a it was an event that happens in but the game. in my defense right. he gets to pick from multiple options and he chose right. the one uh, that was the worst. gotcha there, it was, yeah it, it, it's, it's in the past <laughs> I, I won the chapter. It's fine. It's fine. You yeah. did. You did. All right. We need to talk mm-hmm. about Spy X Family or Spy Family, as as I've been calling it. Uh, neither are wrong. So you can call it whatever you want. I also like Spike's Family. Kind of Spike. That. Spikes, like the Oops. spy and the X are together. Spikes. <laughs> oh, I get you. Okay. Or think of it as like you're spying on your ex family. 
or spy everybody's dead family. Dark. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> but you would like it more then. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let's do non-spoiler reviews. Uh, Jeremy, why don't you go first? Tell us okay. what you thought. Actually, that was in jest. I, I really enjoyed this anime. Um, I, I thought it had a great balance of comedy and and also giving you something that's believable for these characters as far as like the espionage and how they're everybody's deceiving everybody else. And that's got to be hard to... That's got to be hard to, to write for. Like, how do you write situations where you're always skirting that edge, you know, where where uh, where the audience is, is going to wonder, OK, when are they going to reveal it? When are they going to reveal it? And they haven't really gotten to that point yet. We're still early on. But I just I'm always wondering, like, when will these people start figuring it out? <laughs> but the comedy in it is fantastic. The characters are adorable, especially Anya. And uh Yeah. Uh, it's it's really good. All right, Jason, what'd you think? Uh, as a father, this anime hit some chords with me that uh, I didn't feel were fair <laughs> for giving a unbiased review uh, because I thoroughly enjoyed the family moments. Like when I watch anime, it's normally for escapism or I want to see really cool battle scenes or I want really interesting deep stories. Um, even though this has a decent story as far as the political strife that's going on in the world, the family moments, it's so funny because there will be these moments where, uh, the main character is like, you know, I keep up this, you know, I, I'm really loving this fake family. It's like, no, this is a real family. You, you already made it. <laughs> Good job. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's heartwarming. It's fun. It's not as uh, I have a couple nitpicks, but yeah, besides that, it was really good. It's going to be a gusher, folks, because I also loved it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I loved it from concept, though. I, I, I loved it before we started watching. It. I loved it even before. This is a very hyped anime, which I was worried about because sometimes we go into hyped anime and they don't hit like they should. And the hype kind of ruins it. Uh, oh, like it, rank it. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I was kind of worried this was going to be part two of that. <laughs> part four. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> so, but I went. I, I loved it from my, the moment I heard the concept before I knew anybody else even liked it. This the, the hey, there's a, a, a husband, a wife, and a child. The husband's a spy. The wife's an assassin. The child is a psychic, and no one knows about each other's powers except for the psychic girl knows everything. Um, only because stories about a family are so rare and in between. And as a family man, as a father, Jason said, this hit me all along the way. But I, I, I knew that's what I was signing up for. It's what I wanted. And it gave me what I wanted. It was more of a comedy than I thought it would be. Uh, but that was fine. I, I thought the comedy was done very well. And, and it was more a comedy that I prefer. It, you know what vibes I got from this, guys? Uh, Love is hard for an otaku, where it's funny, yes. it's silly, but there's yes, very there's, much so. there's it's not super silly. It's not like bits or or comedy scenes. It's just kind of a long weaving story, very heavily focused on characters and their interactions and, ma and making us love the characters and then caring about those interactions. It did that very well. Just you know, very different shows, but very similar in why I enjoyed them. So I would say that the comedy was better in this, but I do I do agree. It's, yeah, it's, and I think this was a had, had a little bit more of a silly time, mm -hmm. uh, which is fine, especially because you have the little kid and you can get pretty silly with it. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, again, very very well liked for me. Now we also have a guest non spoiler review coming in from the, our friendly podcast, <laughs> a, a podcast that's friends with us and <laughs> we're friends with them when we've been a guest on. And we're going to be guests on soon. I'll be announcing that in a second. But this is Simpin for Senpai and his thoughts on Spy X Family. Hi, I'm Ash Basham with the Simpin for Senpai podcast, bringing you my small, spoiler-free Spy Family review for the boys at the Baka 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 podcast. Mainly, I would like to say that the story is very straightforward at the moment where it's at right now, where... You feel that you got enough to know how the characters are 
and essentially act the way how that they are. But also the fact that it kind of leaves you with wanting more. And that's why I'm kind of glad that there's the second core coming out pretty soon in October. Now, those of you should know that this show was already slated to go a little bit longer, which is good. But also the fact that it kind of hindered it kind of hindered it a little bit for it being split into two cores. They should have just given us a full 24 episodes or 25 episodes what's supposed to be coming out instead of giving us only 12 at the beginning or 13 right now and then later giving us down the road i feel like that could that kind of hurts the score that i feel that we should be giving the series but also the fact that like if if summertime rendering and a couple of cuckoos can continue doing 24 episodes then why the hell couldn't spy family go 24 episodes as well but other than that, though, that's pretty much my short take on that thing specifically. And hopefully you guys listen to the rest of what the Baka 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 boys feel about the series. All right. So, yeah, that was Simpa for Senpai. We will actually be guesting on their show soon to talk about this very anime to get more in depth on it. We had guest starred uh, before on their series and we talked about the season one of Jojo. And that was one of the more... <laughs> it's discussions we've ever had uh, we had a great time doing it and we learned a ton about jojo one thing they do on that podcast is they do a ton of research they are very knowledgeable about their anime compared to us you know we're, we're we come in blind almost completely blind to anime scene and then shoot from the hip and tell you what we think those mm -hmm. guys do a ton of research and they're always very informative so we're very looking forward to meeting with them and discussing and so that will be on their channel so we suggest you go check out their podcast you know, it's actually really funny. I'm almost, I feel haunted a little bit because every time I watch an anime, whenever there's a scene that could possibly be in any way inspired by Jojo, I'm like, that that's that's inspired by Jojo. I know that's inspired by Jojo. <laughs> I never even would have known what that was or thought that these animes would be inspired, except that they made that point, and it was absolutely true. It's on, my, on my vacation, uh, watching cartoons with my niece nephew and son and they're watching adventures of gumball and one of the characters did an anime pose and it was a jojo face yeah and i was like yep i thought I that too. Well. Yep. They, they, yep. they always knew yep. all right let's go on to our thoughts on the opening and the closing the opening was okay um it had kind of that like old school spy like animation going on um the song was okay but this is the first one that like the outro got me. Um, I really liked the imagery. The song was like upbeat and I actually looked forward to it. Um, and like it wasn't super demanding in the imagery, but a lot of like, you know, this is who we're portraying, but this is who we really are. Uh, but this is who we want to be is kind of how I, I, I read it. And it, it was very nice, especially after some of the episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I initially, I didn't really like either song, uh, sound wise, but very quickly they both grew on me. And by the end of it, I, I, I actually really like both songs. And I think it's telling because I stuck around for the intro mm -hmm. and the outro every single episode. And I normally don't do that. Um, I thought that the intro was really interesting in that like 75% of it is in a very childish art style, kind of cut out, you know. Uh, full color blocks and then the other 25 percent is more uh the style of the actual anime maybe even a little bit above it very very nice high high quality uh pretty detailed anime and so in my mind that kind of set the tone for uh the percentage of perspective in this anime and whose eyes we're seeing through 75 percent of the time is probably anya the little girl and i think it actually does kind of hold true with that um there's even times where things are said by characters that are not Anya, and I am left kind of wondering if maybe it's a little bit hyperbole or done, and I'm wondering if maybe it's a little bit exaggerated because it's from the eyes of a child, mm -hmm. and things are different from the eyes of a child. Um, so I thought that was, that was a, a really interesting possibility that that's what they're trying to express. Uh, the outro, yeah, really good song. Uh, kind of weird how it was it was so jazzy but there, there's even a, a couple of spots in it where it just reminded me of like 90s boys to men or brian mcknight or something like it shifts into that gear and i'm like okay i remember this 
um, enjoyed the closing and and listened to it each time. Uh, but neither the opening or the closing like are, are going onto my playlist. I just kind of enjoyed them for what they were. Uh, but the visuals in the opening, like Jeremy already mentioned, I really enjoyed what they did that. And the music, music kind of matches exactly what you were talking about, too, where it's almost a very light song. And then it'll it'll jazz up yeah. a little bit and pick up a little right. pace and then go back to the fun uh, theme. So it worked really well for what they were trying to do to introduce the show. And, and you know, hey, this is going to be mostly light. And there's a little bit of murder and there's a little bit of espionage. <laughs> yeah. uh, but this is mostly a, a light show. But like I said, I also am not adding them to my Spotify playlist. Or anything like I, I also I love that. Me. A little Both. sprinkling of murder. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed that, like in the intro, there there were a lot of different outfits and a lot of different locales, and we really didn't get that in this, which was kind of a surprise to me because that set an expectation in my mind that there's going to be a lot of travel, and the most travel we got was walks, <laughs> lots of walks. <laughs> Utins, go ahead. Yeah. Utins. Utins. All right. Uh, before we go to spoiler section, uh, let's announce our next anime. This is Jason's pick. We are watching Love After World Domination. Uh, this is like if the Red Power Ranger and the Sphinxy Egyptian guy from the bad guys had fallen in love, and then while <laughs> the two teams are fighting, they're trying to secretly meet uh, as well. So yeah, it's about uh, she's working for the evil villains trying to take over the world. He's working for the hero force. Uh, they have met and fallen in love and are trying to hide it from each other's teams. Uh, it, I've heard good things, so it'll. I'm just really surprised. Yeah, someone too. that's not me pick a romantic <laughs> comedy <Yeah. laughs> well, let's just say my options were fairly limited at they this really, time of year they are so not we, the last season <laughs> just ended and there's so many hit anime that just came out what are you talking about they're still airing or they're not in anything that we stream uh, yeah yeah they, they haven't hit our streaming services yet have you heard about summertime rendering yet no I don't I don't know much about it. I'm trying to avoid knowing much about it, uh, but it looks phenomenal. I saw a clip that played on uh, I'll scrolling through Twitter and like a girl with one arm, but her hair was a sword was fighting a giant beast. It was it was awesome action scene. And it's, it's almost kind of sounds like a, a murder mystery in a, in a fishing town in the summer. But Disney bought it <laughs> for Disney Plus. So it's suffering from the. What Netflix used to do, where they they hold it forever before they release it. So while it's out in Japan and some people are watching it, it's just not available for wide audiences yet. I uh, really want to watch it. No, there were three other anime that I had picked beforehand. And I couldn't find them streaming anywhere in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was about to fall back on Vanitas season two because apparently it's ten times better than season one. Um, but I just I felt I wanted something different and I kind of wanted to retry this concept because we already watched one anime with this mm -hmm. concept and it didn't go over very well. No. So, um, yeah. Can I, can I, can I, I have like bad feeling toward that, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they were silly vampires and I don't yeah. want any silly vampires. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I remember this one. <laughs> oh, the sparkly vampires. That's right. As long as we're complaining, I want to complain about Crunchyroll's <laughs> new uh, thing where like th this entire series was on premium. Uh, the first three episodes were free and then the, like you couldn't even watch it. Luckily, it was on Hulu. Uh, so hopefully everyone was able to, to watch it. Uh, I had Hulu so I could watch it. But come on. I I'll watch it with ads. It's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'm not judging anybody. When Crunchyroll is making decisions like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's let's go to spoiler section. Let's talk. Actually, you know, people are like, could you please just talk about how cute Anya is already? <laughs> right. No one, yep. no one cares about your hatred of Anitas. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're 60s, 70s, late 60s. Ish in technology that we see, but it, it kept it vague on purpose, right? Yeah, there's no cell phones, but they've got like supercomputers. But then they cars aren't really a big thing, but they have masks that can reproduce other people convincingly. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of all over the board as far as what what technology is. 
uh, we're dealing with uh, a Western country and Eastern country. I get the sense that they were once one country and then had split at one point. Um, and we start off with like a, a car careening off and crashing with an ambassador in it. And we're told, hey, war is coming. Um, and the West has called in their top agent, Twilight, to help stop the war with the east that's coming that's the whole the whole point of the show that's not really the point but that's the plot (laughs) the plot point there's a war coming we need to stop the mission we need need to get close Mm -hmm. to the guy who's going to start the war but we'll get to them let's talk about twilight who we will be calling or at least i will lloyd because that is the secret identity he's going to create for most of the show but your guys' thoughts on twilight i was thinking about this earlier today and I remember your really big complaint about the last Bond movie and how it was kind of like family that killed him, right? Um, and this one kind of forces a super spy into a family situation, as contrived as this, as this is. Um, but the watching somebody that has gone through so many throwaway identities that does basically doesn't have an identity at this point. In fact, in his internal monologue, he refers to himself as Twilight. He doesn't even refer to himself by a real name. Um, because, you know, he's a master of disguise. He's got, you know, super spy fighting skills. Um, and to, like, nail him down in the context of a mission for his country, because he's a it, he's a extreme patriot that wants to see world peace at any cost um and so i love this concept of what if we take this super talented you know semi super violent individual who will do stop at nothing to accomplish his goals for his country and put him in really this extremely vulnerable state uh, because he mentions multiple times in this anime it makes me extremely nervous to have a particular thing hinged on someone else. And I love that. Uh, there was some really cool thought experiments here. So, um, yeah, I really I really liked it, Lloyd as a character. Great art, too. Great, great character art. Yeah, um, I thought he was pretty good. There's some really interesting foreshadowing that happens in some of the episodes as far as like the relationship between lloyd and your and things that might play out i don't know if they will but they seem like foreshadowing to me um and i just really enjoyed how um obviously like i don't have kids so the perspective i have is a little bit different than your guys's i'm not really resonating with um with the family personally but i'm seeing it more as like an objective third third part third person party perspective and what i'm seeing is that um, he keeps saying that he's he's got to do all of these things in order to present the appearance of a normal functioning family. This this comes up so many times, and every time he says that, I'm like, okay, so like basically, is that's the same exact thing that a, a real dad would would think. Right? Like you're worrying about exactly the same problems that every other father out there is probably worrying about. So for all intents and purposes, you you are a family and and this is only unusual to you because you're seeing it through the filter of i have to do this because it's part of my mission but so does every father like that's their mission <laughs> i also to, to piggyback on that a little bit, i also think he's partially lying to himself so he doesn't have to mm-hmm. confront the fact that he is feeling things <laughs> yes exactly yeah um, as far as negative things, uh, you mentioned a point earlier where you, where you thought I might <laughs> nitpick a little, and I totally agree. Like, this is something that was bugging me as I was watching it. His deductive abilities are amazing, and his research abilities are amazing. Nobody seems to be able to pull the wool over his eyes, except your, <laughs> the wife. And it just, it kind of seems, uh, a little bit, um, a little bit like it, it breaks the immersion a l- just a little bit. And the reason that I don't think it's that big of an issue is because I don't see how you could write a story like this without bending that rule a little. Like there has to be some kind of contrivance to keep this family together. Otherwise he knows. And... Uh, in my own headcanon, I mm-hmm. think he has suspicions and he doesn't, 
pursue those uh, those suspicions because of his emotional attachment to your at this point um again no proof that's only headcanon but that's what i believe (laughs) i like that and i would rather ascribe that um than than uh than just think that there's nothing or think that you know it's a bad anime because the character's inconsistent because it's it's really entertaining to see how they all deal with things from their perspectives um but as far as his behavior uh, otherwise, I, I really enjoy uh, his personality and the things that he has to like the problems that he has to solve for his quote unquote mission. <laughs> I, I would, I'm in the same boat with Jason of what I told myself in my head, because, again, I, I saw it, it. It it twitched in my head and I'm like, oh, well, that's going to be a red flag. And Jerry, <laughs> yeah. if, if I've seen it, <laughs> it's a problem. Um, so I, I went through the same thought process Jason just did. There is a point in the story where he gets suspicious of her and then later, like, feels bad that he did that. And I really wish that had happened earlier because that would that would explain a whole lot. Like, OK, no, no, no. I've, I'm choosing not to be suspicious of her. I tried that. Um, I felt bad. I'm not going to go down that road anymore. Uh, but it, it, it kind of it doesn't play well with the many times that he states, like, if I make a single mistake, it's life or death. And he, he says that so many times. So, right. Yeah, this is a guy who knows he's being watched just almost with a sixth sense as soon as it's happening. Someone's watching me. Um, but he, we also do see that Yor gets past his defenses easily. But that should put him more on guard, not just be a common 100%. I get what you're saying. You're absolutely yeah. right. No. Um, for me, though, Lloyd, Lloyd is not the best character in this anime. But he is my favorite character <laughs> just because of the dad thing. Because uh, my wife started working late afternoons last year, and I took over doing homework with my seven-year-old, and and so, and so watching him help a kid study, and and me thinking back to all those spelling tests we were doing, and and then waiting for that test to come back, and be like, please get a hundred percent. I work so hard. I mean, my kid works so hard. <laughs> you work so hard. <laughs> um, the the moment where they're on a Utin and and the kid get, starts crying and has to be carried back. Like that's Dad 101. You go out somewhere, you're carrying them back. It's almost a guarantee. They will say, "My legs don't work no more. Please carry me." <laughs> uh, and there's so much of that he's going through. I love Lone Wolf and Cub stories anyway for that exact same thing. I love seeing Dad represented well in in fiction, not um not Homer Simpsons, but you know, guys who care and and, and try hard and, and fail. When he yells at Anya, it's the final episode of this season. He yells at Anya partially because he's worried about the danger she's about to step into and she's breaking a rule that might put her in danger and he overreacts. I've done that mistake, you know, like, oh, you're going to get hurt. And then I yell so hard because <laughs> I overreacted. I, I didn't mean to, but I was... It, there's a lot of humanity in the parenting and the kids. We'll get to her. Um, but yeah, it's Lloyd. Lloyd's a favorite. And I love uh, the character designs and all the characters are so good. He stands out so well, even though he has like four different hairstyles. It's it's amazing. <laughs> yep. All right. So uh, back to our story. Uh, we see uh, Twilight's first mission uh, where he gets some some film in disguise, drives away with it. The guy who gave him the film, the real guy shows up and he's like, oh, no, we messed up. Twilight got it. Uh, you know, we see he's the master of disguise. This this caper is about uh, a bureaucrat or a, a senator or something who wears a toupee and wants to keep it hidden. That That's the kind of <laughs> seriousness we're dealing with. And I do like that they... Well, okay. he said specifically that any, like, transparency in government is top priority and any perceived uh, deception could mean execution. Like, that. that's a big deal in their governments. But it's still silly. It is. Like, this is the deception. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We see him then break up with his girlfriend because he was just using that as to get info for the for the mission. The breakup's hilarious, by the way. So good. So So brutal. (laughs) (laughs) You are not smart enough. (laughs) There's these people getting like a proposal happening over there. She's like, oh, I wonder if that'll be us sometimes. He's like, let's break up. Bye. And he just walks. Yeah. And they say, like, I no longer think we can have intelligent conversations. Yes. Yes, exactly. 
like basically you're too dumb for me yes. boy. <laughs> throws away his identity next time we see him he's on the train gets a newspaper from uh an informant or a contact and so we, we find out his spy agency uses ways to send secret codes they tell him what letter it is and that gives you the cipher so he's reading the newspaper but it's really giving him a message about his next mission it's operation strix uh this is what we kind of mentioned before there is a, a man in the east who is going to start a war and, and he's very reclusive there's no way to get to him but he has recently put his child he's putting his child into a um special me. private academy thank you <laughs> yeah they call it an elite <laughs> college in the dub yeah but it's for little kids too. So, um, yeah. So he, they're like, you need to get a kid, and you need to get this kid into the school. And he's like, um, he spits coffee everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yep, coffee everywhere. <clears throat> so he he goes to the east, um, gets his new identity, gets an apartment, uh, changes his name to Lloyd Forger. What? Jeremy has a problem with it. A weird name. <laughs> I'm pausing for you. Like, yes, like, why, why if you're a spy, would you name yourself Forger of all things? Well, I'm sure it's not, doesn't mean the same thing in Japanese as it does in English. I don't think Lloyd is a Japanese name. Sure. <laughs> I assume this was Germany. Hmm. It does reek of like East and West East, Germany. East West Germany, yeah. I I wouldn't be surprised if it is genuinely just because Forger is on the nose for spies. I, I think so, but I think a little yeah. alliteration. Also, think about it, like no no no. That guy can't be the spy. His name was Forger. Why would a spy pick that? That's too <laughs> obvious. Yeah, right. It's, right. it's like hiding hiding in the place where you're starting instead of going anywhere. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's no way a guy named Madoff was able to do <laughs> right, <laughs> right, able to make off with money. <laughs> All right, so his next stop is a rundown, um, technically an orphanage where a guy just hands out children for cash. <sighs> yeah, it's it's like worse than a, a a pet adoption agency. Like he's yeah. just like, yeah, come in, pick one, whatever. Yeah, I don't care. Um, and he's like, hey, I want an intelligent one. The guy's like, oh, I'll, I'll introduce you to Anya. And it, Please take her out of here. Yeah, then we find out <laughs> deep inside, uh, we hear this man's thought that uh, get rid of this creepy kid. <laughs> and then we meet our, our main character. This is the main character of the show, uh, Anya. Uh, so big internet sensation, but what do you guys think of Anya? I absolutely adore this character. Um, not only does she steal this, just about every scene she's in, um, her head cannon, or like just the <laughs> stories that she builds for what she believes is going to happen in the next, you know, due to her actions, is probably some of the most adorable writing I've ever seen in anime. Um, her reactions are great. And I really appreciated that we get this psychic character, or I guess not psychic character, but like te tele telepath. Yep. Well, that's what's weird is they yeah. call her an esper, so there is the possibility that they'll introduce more than just telepathy later. But right now, it's just telepathy. Yeah. Yeah, but so she, you know, she's reading everyone's minds, but it doesn't seem it doesn't seem chosen. So she doesn't get to pick who she's reading. It just kind of broadcasts. Um, and usually when we see these kinds of characters in anime, they're either going to go down a super evil path, use their power for their own gain, or, you know, uh, they, they become some sort of superhero. Um, this just kind of keeps it in this childish arena. And they really do a good job of playing with this concept of what if a child could hear everything around her? Um, and there's plenty of times where she's in crowds and she's just exhausted and the parents don't know why. And it, she, she can't keep all these people's thoughts out of her head. Um, and then there's, you know, a couple where she saves somebody because of it. And I thought it was great. So uh, but <laughs> her being able to know both Lloyd and her upcoming mother's secrets at all times 
and then trying to play them against each other because she's like, well, I can't let them know uh, is is fantastic. Yeah, this character, this character the, the, is amazing. The cherry on that, though, is not only does she know their secrets, she's too young to understand how dangerous that is and just thinks it's really cool. Yes, <laughs> that's the that's the wow, great the job. Secret and police. <laughs> that sounds so cool. <laughs> yeah. How did I not meet him? Yeah. No, all of that. Totally agree with when I first saw the character and how um, where they were taking her. I kind of wondered, where's all the negativity, right? Like, where are all the thoughts that she's hearing that are things that a little girl shouldn't hear because they're so negative? Because, you know, people, a lot of people are depressed, right? And so even if they're just thinking about, you know, how miserable their life is or how miserable their work day is or whatever, you know, that's something that could weigh on a little girl. But then you introduce her to like a spy and an assassin, especially an assassin who has bloodlust and thinks first thing she thinks of when she's discussing a math problem is like <laughs> uh, decapitating and 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 um, dismembering dismember. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Dismembering a body. Like the thoughts that this little girl must be subjected to on a regular basis. What would they do to her psyche? At first, that was my thought. And I was like, OK, this this anime is really missing something because it's not being 100 percent honest about, you know, the toll this would take on her. But it wouldn't fit. And I'm, I'm glad they didn't do it. I'm glad that they pulled away from anything like that. And they they just gave like a couple of little drops of that here or there, like the math question I mentioned. Um, but for the most part, they just completely turned away from uh, turned a blind eye to that because um, it's too funny. It's too cute. And I think that that would drag it into more of a drama and uh, more of a psychological anime and just kind of mess up what they created. It, it's, it's really nice. The, the, um, the values that they have, have come up with for, for uh, comedy and different genres that they picked. Um, and it would totally mess that up. So in the end, I actually do like what they did with her in that regard. Um, another thing that, uh, that I really liked about her was she's, she's spunky. She's, uh, she's really obnoxious when she thinks she can get away with it. One of my favorite scenes with her is, uh, when she's thinking about what her, what her mom says about smiling, right? You know, if something's really bad or really difficult, you smile. And the way that they drew her smile it was so good. I absolutely loved it because she looked like a villainous and the boy even called it out as like a smirk <laughs> where she's like, you know, uh, in the situation where where she was dealing with some bullying at school and everything and, and really threw them off. Um, and when we do get glimpses of, of her her inner thoughts, you know, she's smart enough to try and and manipulate uh, the adults around her, like you said, pitting them against them against each other, but also pitting them back into good relationships. And th there's times where like they're fighting like there's some distance that she can she can sense and she's hearing things in their minds where they're like doubting each other and she literally just calls them out on it by stopping before she gets in the school bus and looking back say get along you know <laughs> like it's amazing and so she's got this fantastic balance of she's a little kid and she's got all the cute um misspoken words mispronounced words not understanding things naivety uh, leaning towards what's cool, even if it is dangerous, because she has no idea about the danger. But then at the same time, they've done a good job expressing a little bit more uh, uh, experience in the world and a little bit more agency of her actually having some power over the people around her, um, which you don't normally see in kids in anime. They're usually, um, like I was mentioning in the pre-show, kids in anime are usually played off of um, they don't usually play off of other characters. So that was really cool. One other thing, I know I've gone on for a long time, but one other thing <laughs> is I do think that there's a bit of a villainous path that she's like tiptoeing on. Like, because her first thought is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to read minds to get my answers. So she being as young as she is, she's in the early stages of like, do I take the easy way and abuse my powers in order to, you know, find an easy life and so she's still like she could go down the villain path but she clearly has an altruistic uh she wants to be good but we'll right. see 
I, I just kind of see it as a, a six year old not being able to think of a reason why why wouldn't I just read your mind and get the answer? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, Anya is the best character in the show, hands down. Her facial expressions are second to none, maybe in all of anime. Um, <laughs> she is a laugh riot. She is the glue that holds the show together. But she is also one of the most realistic kids I've ever seen in an anime. <laughs> I have no, we, we see so many anime where there's a kid and it's like, oh, it, like I'm world weary. I got abandoned by my parents. So I've taken care of myself for years. This is a kid who... Like you try to have a conversation with her and she's going to start talking about her cartoon because she's going to have the conversation she wants. She's six. <laughs> um, you know, uh, she's naive, but doesn't care. She steps in dog poop. <laughs> the the scene that I was like, yes, that is every kid I've ever had is we cleaned the house. No, you spilled a bucket of water and I had to clean that. up. <laughs> yes, that is every six year old kid I've ever had who helped me clean anything. I ended up cleaning up after them. Most realistic kid I've ever seen. Thank you, creators of Spy X Family. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, I want to point out she is Science Experiment 007. Mm. Nice call out. I missed the 007 bar. I do oh too. Oh, God. Mm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he, uh, she, she, has to, she tries to impress him by filling out a crossword, but reading his mind as he thinks of the answers instantly. So it looks like she knew all the answers instantly. Uh, but the great thing about Anya is she's, she's not that smart. She's maybe even below average intelligence or average intelligence. It's hard to tell because she's going to the school for the best of the best. When she's clearly not. And and uh, there's a couple of times where he's like, what about... <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. There's some scenes. Um they go home. She just wants to put on her spy cartoon. So her favorite thing is watching the Bond Man cartoon. She loves watching spies, which is why, hey, when a spy came to uh, get her, that was perfect. That That's my favorite thing. I love spies. And she's like, what do you want? I want a pistol with the sound, sir. <laughs> that's what Bond Man has. <laughs> uh, they go shopping. And this is where he starts, like, she's being really naive. She's like, hey, let's get bacon from there. He's like, that's a bakery. I thought you were smart. And he's saying that in his head, but, of course, she can hear it. Uh, and after a couple of times this happens, she breaks down crying. And he, he's like, what have I done? <laughs> Why is my child just randomly crying? <laughs> so he has to carry her home. And that's when he starts reading parenting books, like speed reading, like 10 parenting books. Uh, because he prepares for everything, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then he, next time he leaves, she insists on coming along. And so he has to lock her in the house as she plays hide and seek. And it's a great scene. Cause he's like, no, you have to stay here. And she keeps sneaking out. And then we hear her thoughts. She's like, my dad's so good at hide and seek. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's so pissed off. <gasps> yep. That's a kid. He has to put a dumpster in front of the door and chain the handle. <laughs> so he goes and he meets with his informant, Frankie. Uh, Frankie's in a few scenes. He's basically as close to a partner as Lloyd has in this uh, spy world and gets info and, and, and the documents for the, the, the new kid. Then when he comes or while he's gone, Anya gets bored and she starts fiddling around in his room with his spy stuff and she finds a radio and she starts sending out messages well the bad guys from the very first mission at the beginning of this episode um, they they pick all those up and they come to get Twilight and so so this means that she knows Morse code because it was coming in in Morse code right because they I were thought, like it's not I thought it was pre record like a pre-recorded SOS broadcast that she must have sent out or something. Oh, maybe. Okay. Because Morse code does seem like out of her realm of knowledge. Right. But maybe and you she, learn it with Spy Show. Maybe they she was, that. she was saying, like, I'm sending this message, but they're saying the message they're getting, which were two completely messages. So I assume okay. she was just hitting random buttons and a message went out. You're probably um, right. Lloyd returns home and he's attacked. And he's able to take down goons. And he looks for Anya and he can't find her, realizes she's missing. And he's like, well, 
it wasn't really working out anyway. <laughs> what is my responsibility here? And then we see him getting attacked from behind. Then we cut to Lloyd being dragged into these goons who have captured Anya. They throw him down. He's got a mask over his head. And all the goons are like, oh, yeah, let's get him. This is Twilight. We finally got him. And they pull off the mask, and it's the goon that has snuck up on Twilight. And he is wearing the goon's face as a mask. And he grabs Anya, and he snuck out. And he tells her, dressed as the goon, of course, she knows it's him because she can hear his thoughts. But he's like, hey, this is hide-and-seek championship. You need to run to the police. Um, But he's basically like, go. Like, I'm not putting a kid in danger. Why would I ever do this? This is insane. Go. And then he goes back... Is this the first time that she says, my papa is a liar? Yeah, my, my <laughs> papa is a liar. I love that. <laughs> uh, he goes back and takes out all the guys, threatens their boss with, hey, I know everything about your daughter. I know where the moles are on her, her body. In case you were wondering if Twilight was sleeping with people. Yeah, he's he does. Um, and uh, takes him down. And then when he comes out, Anya's out there waiting for him and said that she... she was waiting for her papa, and she wants to go home with him, and he decides to take her home. They have to get a new apartment, and they study for the the in- placement test to get an interview for this academy. Um, and when they go to check the scores, she has earned an interview, and <laughs> Twilight, so overjoyed, is, is a great scene. This is the first scene I was like, oh, this is going to get me a couple times. Picks her up, overjoyed with pride, and then all the anxiety just hits his body that he's been pent up with, and he collapses. Um, then we see them back home. They get mail. He's asleep on the couch, and she cuddles with him, and he freaks him out because he's like, whoa, how did someone get close to me? Kind of the first sign his skills are waning due to the situation. Didn't he and, say, like, are you trying to kill me? Yeah, <laughs> are you trying to kill me? Uh and the letter is, hey, you got an interview. You need to come with your wife and daughter. And and as as Anya puts out, there is no mama. <laughs> mama doesn't exist. Mama doesn't exist. That's right. <laughs> uh, and then so in the next episode, it's about finding a mama. First, they try dressing up Frankie. He's hideous. Um, that doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, well, I think the best part about the scene is just how offended he is that they don't think he's pretty. <laughs> he's like, "Oh, this work." Frankie is a good character. Uh, yeah. He he gets some funny scenes. Yep. And then we uh, we were introduced to some governmental clerks uh, who work and, and a bunch of gossipy ladies, except for one quiet one whose name is Yor. And this will be our mama of the show, but also. The assassin of the show. So what do you guys think of your? I have two minds. So uh, overall, I think she's a great fit. I think she's a great character. Um, I like the dichotomy of her (laughs) life as a mom and her life uh, in the shadows. A couple things. I didn't like that they shied away from her missions. Like they showed quite uh, like some more of Lloyd's missions later on. They showed none of her. They was just mostly implied. Um, this is probably going to happen in season two, but it would be really interesting to see them both be in the same spl- place at the same time doing their gigs. Right. So like Lloyd's trying to break into some place to steal something. And here she is assassinating his target. Um, that would be uh, that would be interesting. Um, and I was half expecting that to happen. That never did. Um, mm-hmm. I really like her softer side. Um, and it, I don't know, so, some doesn't hit right with the character with such a dark other side. Um, and they, they use it more for comedy than they could do for complicating the situation. Um, but it, it's it's a funny joke. In fact, there's a really funny scene where she's like, uh, you know, let's celebrate. I'll cook you something. And then Anya just kind of steps towards dad and she's can you cook instead? <laughs> yeah. Um, but the the bit of she's not good at anything. Yeah. Um, I think went a little too far. I think it would have been a nice heartwarming thing by the end if, she, you know, she had made something wonderful or she cleaned the house and everyone appreciated her because um, there that is a story beat uh, 
about her being depressed about it and it's that it's not quite resolved but um as a fit for the show i thought she was good i liked her mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah it i'm kind of in the same boat as you are um except i think that if they did focus too much on her missions it might make the show a bit too dark or heavy or dramatic just because the bloodlust that she goes into is pretty, pretty harsh. Like she's saying, please let me choke you to death. You know, (laughs) (laughs) I rip their bodies apart, you know, like, and she loves it. Like she gets these grins. And, and so, um, I'm, I'm also, I remember Troy, you mentioned in a chat early on, like before we started watching this, your, your theory and your hope that maybe they'd be on two different sides. I think that's a distinct possibility. It's not for sure yet because we don't know who's given her missions, but it kind of seems like it because she is from the East. He's from the West. I've put a lot of thought on this because I I think one of the biggest question marks that or the biggest points of interest for me is what is her gig? Because it almost seems to be not government related, like it's it's Mm -hmm. mercenary work. Uh, But she says she's killing bad guys. Mm hmm. So who's she killing bad guys for? Did, are they actually bad, bad people? Or are she just being told they're bad people? There's a lot of question marks there that I do want to see explored. I think I recall a moment where she s- talked about his target as somebody who was going to bring peace to the world. But it might have been one of the gossiping women. I'm not 100% sure about who said it. I just I really thought it was a female and I thought it was her. Um So that would imply, if that's true, that would imply that she's definitely on the side of the East, even if she's not employed by them. But who knows? Yeah. Um, I actually kind of enjoyed the the ineptness and sort of naivety that she had, even though it didn't necessarily fit the type of character that would have the bloodlust and the skill set that she has. Like... The, the, those two things do not go hand in hand. Like you, you can't be that effective without having a very uh, capable, practical uh, mind that's going to be able to to predict the situation and and be good at things, right? Like she should be almost as good at espionage and sneaking around as as he is. Right. But in the the situations that we are given to view she does not assassinate with stealth (laughs) she's like she's like the character build that just walks in the front door and kills everybody (laughs) so so maybe that maybe that accounts for it i don't know but um but it it is she's an interesting character she does have some skill i mean there's that moment where they're being watched by the uh school officials and they both notice someone's watching them right Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I the, the, I'm gonna kick down the front door and yeah. get everyone. That was, <laughs> her, that's her. Yeah, I I would say her. She has a very specific set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, cooking obviously is not one of them, and I think social skills I think is her big hook hookup. You know, because she's she's never been able to talk or, or, or she. Wow, everything that's she a really thinks good about, example. <laughs> everything she thinks about is death and murder. And then she looks at other people who are talking about normal things, and she's like, yeah. I, "I can't relate to any of that." Um, but her espionage skills, I think, are there. Her um, formal work is cleaning, right? No, she's a clerk. Oh, okay. All right. So, like typing stuff and stuff. Okay. Um, I love your, and it's really nice to love an anime character who's not a child <laughs> for once. that kind of love okay <laughs> for uh, yeah this, this got this got really weird yeah. look <laughs> your your is a bay uh for sure and, and it's not even the dress it's the red sweater guys i, I love that red sweater yeah. uh it's very cute <laughs> um <laughs> And she's adorable, and and I like that she's not exactly the same as Lloyd, and in like a polar opposite of him, um, she's a sweetheart who just is really good at murder and does murders, <laughs> and, yeah. that, and that works for me. Um, I, I don't have any issues with her. Uh, I, I get your your guys's points; they're not wrong. I just thought she fit so well in the show. 
all three main characters I thought were perfect, well designed, and just worked well. The chemistry between all three just just works. And every time Yor has something nice to say to Lloyd, anytime Lloyd says something nice to Yor, every time Yor is there for Anya, um, it, it just works well. And it, it's to me, these three carry the show. These three are the reason the show is good. It, the missions can get a little silly. The comedy, you know. It, that's fun. It's fine, but it's the three characters. It is a character-based show, and that they they carry everything. I I do love that. There's a moment where uh, Yor is insinuated to be a woman of the night because she went to men's rooms. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't think those men that she visited came out of those rooms. <laughs> no, I, nope. I do agree with what was said earlier about like. I'd love to see, I just want to see Yor and Lloyd having to confront both the feelings that are actually starting to grow and the, the lies that they're hiding behind. Um, obviously, that, that kind of ends the show when we get there, but I'm excited for that journey. My worry is that that journey is going to take too long and the the journey itself will, will not be that fun. There will um, be a lot of close calls and it will dull the uh, the enjoyment of right. the close calls um you know right now uh a lot of people are loving uh kaguya sama love is war you know jason doesn't but it's a big hit <laughs> i remember my complaint on that is that the relationship didn't move in the first season those season we watched um i i think i've heard that the relationship has moved forward that's what needs to happen you know mm. relationships have to continue to grow and evolve and as long as that keeps happening this show will be interesting as soon as it starts just staying in one place to not ruin its own concept i will grow it'll grow stale really quick i think chuck is a a good example of this um the way that that played out over the different seasons uh the relationship very slowly gradually changes yeah unlike bones which waited way too long and then and then when it flipped the switch it just wasn't interesting anymore and like uh, but you go nine seasons that's gonna happen Mm mm-hmm all right. Uh, we then see Miss Yor also commit uh, a murder. Oh, and, and she's been invited to a dinner party that she has to bring a date to. Because if you don't have a date, you're probably a spy. What kind of single woman doesn't have a date? Yeah, uh, what is this place? Like, <laughs> holy cow, the level of surveillance and like neighborly reporting is horrific. <laughs> and also, they don't really seem to like Yor, even though she's completely inoffensive in every way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they... Well, that's a sign you're hiding something. Right. Uh, so she she does the murder, and um, we also see her talk on the phone with her her brother and tells her him she has a date, just so he won't worry about her. We'll talk about the brother later. She ruins her dress. She gets blood on it, so she goes to a dressmaker who's the same dressmaker that Lloyd uses for his new daughter, and. So we see Lloyd and her interact with each other, and he, Lloyd's caught off guard because she sneaks up on him, and that doesn't happen. And he checks her out, and she notices he checks her out. And he's like, okay, that doesn't happen either. What's going on? And he never looks into that at all. Um, but why stare a gift horse in the mouth? Because <laughs> Anya hears, hey, this woman's an assassin and also needs a pretend boyfriend. She'd be perfect for the mother. Lloyd's also like, hey, yeah, this this would this could work. Um, but she thinks, well, he, he's got a kid, must have a wife. So Anya, in the middle of the, of the dressmaker, oh, I'm so sad. My mom is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, Lloyd and, and Yor get to talking, and she asks him to pretend to be her boyfriend for a party. He says, okay, will you pretend to be my wife for a school interview? And they both agree. But meanwhile, because we find out there's a shortage in staffing for the spies on in the west side, um, Lloyd gets extra missions, which is what I want. That's what I want from the show. I want Lloyd trying to trying to do missions while balancing everything, and Anya and Yor ending up helping through their own secrets, but everyone's keeping a secret. That's what I want over and over again. He has to stop a smuggling ring. I don't know why a spy would stop a smuggling ring in the opposing country. Yeah, you should encourage it. Right. <laughs> <You think? laughs> Unless they're smuggling stuff from the west to the east. I guess maybe that could be. But yeah, apparently he also has to be a crime fighter sometimes. 
Mm-hmm. He goes with Frankie. It's a jewelry heist. He steals a diamond ring from because they have to steal the jewelry back. And he pawns himself his own a diamond ring. But they get chased, and he's running late to meet with Yor, and they get in a crash. So Yor realizes he's not coming. She goes to the party alone. Feels completely isolated. Feels like a weirdo. Everyone treats her like a weirdo. Everyone's gossiping about her. And she's just getting ready to leave. And Lloyd burst in, covered in blood. <laughs> and he's like, don't worry. It's because I'm a therapist. <laughs> this is what happens. And, and, and Lloyd messes up because he's kind of in a daze. And he, there's two cover stories to remember. And he says, yeah, I'm her husband instead of I'm her boyfriend. So now they all think they're married. And he's like, yeah, but I, I love my wife very much. One of the girls tries to spill hot food on your. She catches it with her foot. Um, and then they're like, oh, yeah, but don't you know your wife was a, a woman of the night? And he's like, um, my wife had to take care of her brother in hard times. And I'm very, very proud of her. And you know what, Lloyd? You're the man. Um, uh, yeah, take that blonde winch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's so mean. She's <laughs> the character. She is the worst. <laughs> Camilla, her name is Camilla. Yeah, that's um, right. Then while on their drive home, they're attacked by the smugglers again, and he's like, "Oh, it's my patients. They're just <laughs> upset." <laughs> they end up it's fighting them. Kind of therapy. They end up yeah. fighting them in the alley, and yours taking out guys left and right. And she's like, "I do yoga." <laughs> he's like, "All right." Um, she really he, made that guy fly. <laughs> he. And then she suggests, you know, we should just get married. We should do it. It would help me It'd make people less suspicious of me. And, and then I could help you with your daughter. Uh, we could just have a marriage of convenience. And he's like, oh, cool. But I lost the ring. So he takes the ring out of a grenade, throws it at the bad guys. It blows up. Now, look, I don't really have a problem that Yor can't figure out Lloyd's secrets. She's very naive and even might be too naive for this. But the fact that he, he told her, like, no, this is a therapy where I beat them down. But then he just killed like four guys with a grenade. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's a great scene because they're behind a dumpster. He's putting the ring on her finger while the grenade's going off. I love the scene. But she doesn't even for a second go, did she, he just kill four patients? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, also, like this is the beginning of multiple scenes where no one else in this world is able to show the kind of power your does i yours is a super superpower like she takes she, down trees with a with a volleyball well yeah. and like she kicks and misses lloyd's head but still cuts his cheek like that's that's super strength i, I, I don't know how else to say it yep i'm i'm torn because like a lot of the things that we see her do when she's with lloyd I kind of see as just exaggeration that's common in anime. But then the crazy stuff that she does, like the volleyball and, and you know, throwing it and making light, light. And parting the water with a beam of light. Yeah. Like she does that when she's with Anya. And so yeah. part of me kind of wonders if that's through Anya's lens. That works for me. But I, she kicks that guy so hard, he goes flying. Yeah, he's like, like oh. flying. But we do see that sometimes the way that anime portrays, you know, powerful, regular human characters. Sometimes sure. They go to that degree. I like so. it. I, I like the whole scene. <laughs> no, I, I, no complaints about the scene. I'm just pointing out she's a superhero. <laughs> Villain? Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> Not in her own head. <laughs> All right, so that's what Yor- matters is that the <laughs> villain doesn't think they're a villain. <laughs> so Yor moves in with Lloyd. She gets her own room. Anya gives her a tour. <laughs> the tour is adorable. Yes. And this is the scene where she's like, "I helped clean up. You spilled water that I cleaned up. <laughs> um, I helped make dinner. What what is it that she did there? She did something there too. Yeah, I spilled got flour there. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then they practice for the interview Anya's saying like terrible things and then they ask your questions and she's talking about murder and death (laughs) and and the the level of anxiety that that Lloyd is having to deal with all the time the fact that for the first time in his life despite disarming nuclear bombs 
like this is the first time in his life he's felt true stress <laughs> and, and he's just like oh my god this is what i have to work with <laughs> we're dead <laughs> we're so doomed um so they decide to go on a family outing outing mm-hmm. uh they visit the tailor they get a, a family photo they visit the opera they go to a restaurant um but lloyd's still stressed so your suggest they go to a park and while they're at the park, they witness a old woman get her bag snatched. And Yor immediately jumps in to save the day, like <laughs> flying down the hill. Um, but she loses them. And Lloyd's looking for him, too. And Anya finds him in the crowd with her powers and points out, like, that man's silly. So Lloyd's able to identify him. Actually, no, she doesn't. She said, I want to go to that shop. Oh, yeah, I want candy or... or yeah, so she's yeah. about him. No, she pointed directly at the shop that he was currently so passing, and then Lloyd saw him at his walk. He's like, okay. uh, you can change your clothes, but you can't change the way you walk. Mm-hmm. That's right. So Lloyd does a jump from the bridge and, and full-on tackles the guy into the ground. Uh, they get the bag back, and they give it to the old lady. Um, and this is this, So this is episode three, but they mentioned in the first episode, on his mission briefing, they were like, no one will ever thank you. You'll never be recognized for the things you do, but you do serve a greater purpose, right? Well, this old lady thanks him for what they did. Something, again, spies aren't supposed to stand out. He's not supposed to do stuff like this, but he gets thanked for the first time, and he's like, well, that that feels good. <laughs> feels good to get recognition and be appreciated. Um, yeah. Now, the only reason I pointed out that she didn't point direct, she didn't point at the guy and say something about the guy is because that's a constant fear in Anya's mind okay. is that if she she always second guesses what she's going to say when it comes to something she's noticed from hearing someone else's thoughts. Mm. Uh, we get a couple scenes where she's like, if I say, hey, this thing is happening and they're like, how could you possibly know you witch? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and well, so, and, yeah, and they'll they'll. A spy wouldn't want a psychic around, so he'll get rid of her too. Uh-huh. Right. So she's protecting herself by not. Uh, yeah. Doing I I had a minor concern with this scene because this guy's in a different part of the town right now, and Lloyd just jumps down on him and and attacks him. At that moment, I kind of would have liked to have seen people run in fear. Um, as far as they're concerned, this is another mugging. Like, there's no right. reason for them to think until he holds up the wall and is like, uh, he's a mugger. And why would the people necessarily believe him? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but it was fine. It was just a tiny little thing that I, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's 2022 when dangerous things happen and people don't pull out their phones and start recording it. I think it looks weird. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know well, how people are supposed to react anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. All right. Uh, favorite, my favorite moment of this episode, though, is here at the end. Uh, Lloyd and Yor say something nice to each other, and Anya, Mama and Papa are flirting. No, we're not. Yes. Yeah, I love it every time she does that. Yep. It's great. I, sw- I swear to God, if they don't follow through with this shit, <laughs> I swear <laughs> to God, I'll never forgive this show. They're doing a good. They're they're building it so well. They are laying down the the foundation of it. It is a a romance made perfectly. If they don't follow through, I mean, it's, well, there's some rock roads ahead. They are yeah, laying the foundation sure. for some sure rocky road. There, I I do have a really big like disbelief issue later on because they're like, oh, it's been a year. It's like you're telling me that these two have been no. living together for a year. No, they faked the they backdated their marriage. It was the mm-hmm. official oh, that's right. One that's right. Mm-hmm. I had the same problem. I was like, this has been a year. Anya's been in school mm-hmm. for like two weeks. No, Anya's been in school for like two, three weeks. That's it. Well, oh, it, two, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I, this is really important to me. I, I don't get to demand what the show does, and, and but I really need to see Lloyd choose the family over the mission. That's where I want this to go at some point, and I need to see. Well, he attempts it in the last episode, so that was good. Yeah, I also think the same thing will happen with Yor. I think there will come a point where she needs to assassinate a target. Lloyd will be in the way, and she'll have to uh, choose Lloyd right. the target. Yeah, and that's that's stuff I'm excited to see. And again, if they take too long to get to it, I'm gonna get it's gonna get stale. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, next episode, it is time for the interview. So they they finish up their prep 
Um, and when they get there, that's when they're like, oh, we're being watched. So even just they walk into the courtyard and all the teachers are in the windows up above. The interview's already begun. So the foragers make sure they stop and give their respects to the founder and his statue. Uh, and there's a man named... So elegant! I love that yeah. guy! He's my favorite! <laughs> Henry Henderson, the, a headmaster of, of the school. And you, you know how awesome this character is because he gets the obligatory shower scene. <laughs> he does. <laughs> uh, yeah, old Harry guy and the Henderson's. Longer. Wasn't that a 90s show? Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, movie with a uh, big movie. Class. That's right. I used to like that movie. I was going to see it a long time. Such a great character. <laughs> um, yeah, so his whole thing, he, he's like, this is about elegance. We are a school about elegance. I don't think he's using the word elegance right <laughs> a lot of the times, but that is the word he's sticking with no matter what. Yeah. Um, so he has set up tests, especially for the forgers, because he's uh, he's noticed the forgers. He, he's been paying attention to them. And they come across... He starts a- to get into a competition. Even though Lloyd doesn't know him yet. So the, the forgers uh, come across a kid stuck in the gutter. There's, if they leave him behind, that wouldn't be very elegant. But yep. if they save him, they'll get all messy for their interview. Lloyd jumps right in. They work as a team. They save him. But, hey, they have a change of clothes ready to go. <laughs> they anticipated this kind so of thing. So elegant. That's elegant <laughs> anticipation. <laughs> How did he- like, where did he change? <laughs> right there. <laughs> there's a few other right things. There. And then suddenly there's an animal stampede. And the <laughs> Henderson turns around. He's like, guys, don't you think that's a little far? And they're like, wait, you didn't do that? This is real. <laughs> this is a real stampede. <laughs> um, but uh, they, they, Lloyd saves a kid. Yor takes out a cow. <laughs> <laughs> With pressure points, with and pressure. I love I love her excuse, dude. She's like, oh yeah, acupuncture class type shit. <laughs> yep. For animals, Yor <laughs> is one of the cutest anime women I've ever seen. But her, her excuses are the, terrible. The way they draw, <laughs> no, the way they draw her when she's in battle mode, how sharp her features get. Mm-hmm. She's downright scary looking. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Anya also gets a little bit of a spotlight because we learn that she can read animal minds. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. We do learn that. Yep. Um. So Henderson comes out and he's like, hey, we are actually going to delay the interviews because this happened. And Lloyd's like, no reason. No, no need. We've bought a third change of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and they change again. And, uh, yeah, too much elegance. Too much elegance. So elegant. <laughs> um, and, you know, when we did when we do pre-show, we talk about our favorite moments just kind of set each other up. I should have mentioned this. The interview here mm-hmm. is is probably my actual favorite. This interview is so good uh, because of what it reveals about Lloyd. Um, they go in and there's there's Henderson. There's a very nice teacher there, and there's a very mad teacher who's just getting divorced and he hates everyone. He wants nobody to join the school. He's not really a teacher though. He's just an administrator, isn't that right? Right. He's the son of yeah. the head or former head of the school. Either way. I, I think it's basically his at this point because he would it was just inherited to him. He's a jerk. Yeah. And he starts with questions about their marriage. And he starts mocking Yor for not being able to cook very well. And and the story is this is Lloyd's second marriage, right? So she's Anya's stepmom in their in their cover story. And then he starts questioning Anya. <laughs> Anya's answers at first to the nice questions are hilarious, like because they're all based on spies and video and cartoons, and but they're they're interpreting them as like, oh, that's the most elegant answer because she's like, I would go through the jungle to to be like <laughs> the head. And defuse a bomb, <laughs> yeah. And she's like reading Lloyd's mind a little bit and just repeating some of the things he's thinking, right? Too. Whereas he's like so in spy bad. mode, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, the, the mean guy starts in on her and he's like, well, do you love your parents? And she's like, oh, I love my parents so much. And you could tell that really affects Lloyd and your. And he's like, yeah, but what about your old mom? And we haven't addressed her parents at all. We don't get we only get snippets of everyone's backstory here and there. Um, but, yeah, she starts crying, thinking about her mom. And the guy starts mocking your again. 
Um, like, oh, I guess you love your mom more than your new mom. She must not be that good a new mom. And at first, yours getting ready to kill this man because he's making on <laughs> cry. But then when he starts going in on your, the scene cuts to Lloyd jumping up <laughs> to beat him. And, and it kind of like freezes frames. And he's like, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. beat this man yeah, because the in- internal monologue for Lloyd is like, just keep calm. We uh-huh. just need to get through this. He's, but he's here he is coming at him, even though you've got this like Twilight. What are you doing? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, he punches the table, shattering it. But on the table was a mosquito. There you <laughs> it's go. Gonna, it's gonna be important. Justification. And he's like, I had to get the mosquito. But we're done with this interview. If this is how you treat people, this is not the school I want to go to. So they leave. And then Henderson punches the rude guy because he was Which not elegant. Was so <laughs> satisfying. Yeah. Okay. Um, and oh. they had hope. There, there's also a great scene because we had seen a kid coming out of the interview before and his dad being like, why would you answer like that? Oh, it was, that was so terrible. And then we get a scene here where Anya's like, I'm sorry I messed up. And Lloyd's like, you did your best. Don't worry about it. It's like, oh, that's some good parenting right there. And they decide they're going to leave it up to fate. Mm-hmm. And then they go to check if they're admitted and they're not. Yep. <laughs> but Henderson I love how pulled... superstitious they got the whole time. They're like, there's a cat walking across. Oh she God. stepped in poo. <laughs> 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 it was so good. <laughs> um, yeah, so they, they, they're walking away defeated, and Henderson pulls them aside, and he's like, actually, Anya's the number one person on the reserve list, and we always get a couple drops out, so she will make it. And I just Yours want like, you guys to know. who am I going to kill? Yeah, oh, God, you're, <laughs> you're being like, I'm going to kill the guy on the uh, on the list. Yeah, and whose, imagine son, if, whose son Lloyd saved from the stampede. Right? That's right. the dad she's going to kill. <laughs> Uh, um, I need your son's spot. <laughs> yeah, H- Henderson's excuse for giving them this information is mosquitoes are the number one killer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you did us a huge service here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they they have to go home and they wait for the call and it finally comes in and and they they celebrate and Frankie shows up to celebrate Anya getting into the school and he brings wine. This is where we find out that you're is a as a drunk. <laughs> uh-huh. I was so worried about Frankie. The last time we saw him when he was in the van and they were making their getaway, um, it looked like he got shot and like hunched over. Mm. So I thought, boy, did they kill Frankie? Yeah, but he's good. And he's drunk yep. too. One of my and... favorites, like this, this is a dad scene is that when he gets the call and he hangs up, he then pulls a party popper out of his pocket. Yes. I'm like, yep, that was a dad move. Yeah. <laughs> Celebrate, pop. <laughs> uh, so, so the whole, this whole episode is, is kind of a silly one, but um, Frankie basically convinces uh, Lloyd to give Anya her, her wish, which is, I want to play Bond Man for real. So they rent out a castle, which is now a amusement park ride that was used for the Bond Man uh, TV show. <laughs> and they call in uh, the wise of the spy foundation they work for uh, to to pay for it and rent it out for them. And then when they get there, every available spy, <laughs> they fly a plane. Yours like, why are we getting on a plane? Yeah. <laughs> it's not drunk. <laughs> Lloyd flies into the, this castle. And then they call in every possible agent to come in and play the bad guys in this scenario. And they all think it's a real mission. And, but they're like, oh, but we get to go against Twilight, Twilight the number one agent. I've always wanted to do this. So they're all excited. And basically, Twilight has to go through. They're shooting. It's not paintballs, but it's like Nerf balls. Yeah. And and we see that he's a super awesome fighter. Yeah. James Bond style guy. Yeah. Yeah. And tell, chases down Frankie. Yep, he yep. chases him down across towers and eventually makes it to the final tower. And he faces the most powerful boss he can't beat. And it's your drunk, not letting anyone touch her daughter. And she <laughs> almost kills Lloyd, but uh, passes out before it happens. I Yeah, he even has this, in, like, he says his mind, he's like, she's going to kill me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's blocking all her shots and then her, uh, her, her heel breaks. 
Yeah. And so she ends up falling, and then when she hits the ground, she just passes out. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then we get a real sweet scene uh, with Lloyd and Anya and her today, and she's going to do her best, and him cuddling with her on a bench, <sighs> um, pulling her close. And then the spy agency gets the bill <laughs> and loses <laughs> their mind. See, this is the episode, first episode where I was like, oh, man, this feels like foreshadowing. Like, where you have your... Standing in the way uh, of kidnapped Anya, and Lloyd is coming to rescue her. Uh, see, so I like this episode. It's fun. It just it mm-hmm. kind of felt extravagant, like a lot to, to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, if it is foreshadowing, then I like it much, much more. Yeah. So okay. good. All right. Well, they visit the tailor to to get her fitted for her school uniform, and there the tailor warns them about. Bullying in the school is a big problem. Taylor gets scary. <laughs> yeah, <she does. laughs> They'll even kidnap you. <laughs> what? But Lloyd uh, gets a message that he has to meet with his handler, so he's not able to help, so he sends Yor and Anya to go pick it up alone, and he goes to meet with the, uh, Sylvia, who's his handler, and she's like, okay, here's phase two of the mission. She... She needs to become an honor roll student, which the way you get that is you get eight stars. So they have stars and they have bolts. Demetrius bolts or something Demetrius like that? bolts, yeah. Basically merits and demerits, right? If you get eight for excellent works, best grades, stuff like that, you get on the honor roll and you get to go to a special party. Uh, the guy's first son is not already on the honor roll, so they he'd get to be at a party with him and that would be a way to contact. So they want him to get her on the honor roll. And if she gets eight bolts, then you're expelled automatically. So that's phase two. The first son is in there. I I thought that he was anticipating the second son getting eight very quickly. That might be true. That might be right. Because I, I don't guess I'm assuming. I thought the, I was the first son. I I was pretty sure that the first son is an Imperian, though. He definitely is, but I just I I don't I, think that she would be able to cultivate a friendship with him because he's probably much older. Yeah, no, no. Friendship is Plan B. That's true. That's the true. getting the getting yeah. to the Imperian party is plan A. I don't know if the older brother of the first son is graduated yet or not. Is the yeah. It didn't sound I, like I guess it. I, I'm, it sounds I like he's student, still in school. Right. That was my assumption. But I could see Jeremy's point that maybe they're just simply either way mm-hmm. on a roll. And then mm-hmm. we're going to find out about the plan B, which is <laughs> become best friends because because Lloyd's like, yeah, this this kid's not make an honor roll <laughs> yeah so his his plan b is you would go and become best friends with him and then when i drop you off for a play date boom i make contact i i do love his uh like well we could manufacture some things for her to get <laughs> yeah <laughs> um your uh, your takes anya out with her uniform and Anya showing it off to everyone how cute she is and then yours like i'm gonna i'm gonna be a better mom i'm gonna learn how to cook and she goes and she's buying vegetables she's like i don't know what any of these do so i'm just gonna buy them all (laughs) uh but while she's doing that uh anya goes outside because she's bored and she gets grabbed by some goons uh who want to steal her uniform and sell it but your finds them and scares them very badly one of them throws what looks like a squash or some sort of hard pumpkin like thing at her and she just breaks it with her hand <laughs> and th- they're just like did she just break that with her hand she's like if you don't want to end up like that melon you better go <laughs> uh, yeah yeah so so they return home and anya's like hey can you train me so that i won't have to be scared anymore and yours like Yep, I can do that. <laughs> so she teaches her how to punch. And Lloyd comes home to see them trading. He's like, that's odd. <laughs> but all right. So school starts. Well, he's... well two oh, things really goodness. quick. Um, one of them was that she actually realizes that it's more important for her as a mother to be attentive to the whereabouts of her daughter <laughs> yeah. than worry about the food she's going to be making. Um, and then also I was thinking the fact that uh, Anya already has like a superpower of psychic ability, which to your point, Jason, there's absolutely no reason that your isn't super in some way because we have a super. 
So it may just right. be a thing in this world. Um, but imagine if Anya, already having telepathic ability, raised by a spy father and taught the ways of an assassin mother. Like, you, you've got an amazing origin story for a character that would be really entertaining in their own rights. <laughs> well said. Well said. <laughs> um, all right, so they go, to class, they go to school. She gets put in her class, which is with the second son of their target, Damien. And because lo- the organ the Frankie, song. yeah, Frankie cooked the books to get her, her, them together. And, and like, like, like I've been mentioned, this is plan B. Get her close to the sun, make them best friends. So now we need to talk about Damien, the second son. Uh, thoughts on him? I r- thought I would hate this kid. And I actually really love the arc he's going through. Um, he's. There's a helicopter. Sorry about that. Um, it's a spy. Second. Oh my god! Hold on a second. <laughs> can't, can't believe we're watching two romantic comedies in a row. Even the last season was heavy on the romantic comedies. Yeah, it was. I oh, remember looking through worse. the possibilities and thinking, uh, "This is like the third time I've heard that heard a helicopter this week too." You know, we had been requested uh, by Gamer Dad, which is kind of why I told him no, um, to watch um, Dress Up. I Dress Up Darling. Darling. I considered yeah, yeah, yeah. that one because it's getting so much publicity. Like, I see yeah. her in cosplays and stuff. Yeah, it, it's apparently it's a really good, like, mature look at a relationship and a really good romance story. But I'm like, dude, you're, you're asking me to make Jason Jerry watch a show about uh, cosplayers, costume and dress up. Um, Does she have powers or something? Please? No, 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 it's, it's, no, no, it's, it's pure just, romance. Like, he's good at sewing. She loves cosplay and she's the hottest <sighs> girl in school. Uh, but there's like, like they actually do stuff. It's very mature instead of just like, I slap you. You saw my butt. Um, <laughs> none of that. So people are finding it very refreshing as far as. Mm-hmm. All right. Interesting. Uh, yeah. uh, no, Damien. Damien. Yeah, yeah. Damien. Um, yeah. So I have. I thought I'd hate this kid, and I actually really, in, I mean, really enjoying the arc that he's going through because he comes into the scene as this pompous, rich. My dad and my brother are really important people, therefore I should get all the things entitlement, and as the story progresses, not only is he partially humbled but he's also fighting with his own adolescent feelings um and he seems to have a a moral compass that he's kind of fighting against to be this bully and it keeps winning out internally and it's interesting how anya handles it because she can hear all of his internal dialogue so you know one minute it seems like he's you know, going to come around and then another minute. No, nope, he's mean again. Um, so he, I, I've actually, I actually really enjoy this, like um, this relationship that, that they have. It's not a dichotomy. <laughs> it's nice. Try. <laughs> I was thirsty. We'll, we'll slip that word in there somewhere. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I liked him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat again. Great character. Uh, love the presentation. I think one of the other things I really like about him is that he he is still presented as a kid, too. Um, there are scenes where we get to see uh, him and his friends imagining themselves as anime characters in different IPs. And <laughs> it's fantastic the way that they the way that they portrayed that. Like, it's very convincing that he's still just a kid, even if he does have this you know, pompous, arrogant exterior at times. Um, he's he's just another kid, <laughs> being a kid. <laughs> Jason and, and Jeremy really nailed everything how I feel about him. So I'm going to add, just add on. I really hope uh, this is again where I'm wanting it to go, and it's always a it's always a recipe for failure. But I really hope he is more than just the way to meet the dad. He is the key to convincing the dad for the world peace. Because he clearly has dad issues. Mm-hmm. Um, he could, Like you said, he has that moral compass, which he's trying to fight against. And I'd love to see 
the fact that Anya is affecting him and that pushing him through his arc and then that really being the catalyst to getting through to the dad for Operation Strix. And I love that that's what she thinks it is, too, like constantly, not necessarily that it'll change him or use him to get to the dad. But like she knows how important it is right. that she gets this relationship <laughs> like every time that she imagines it. She imagines everybody being happy together, having world peace and then <laughs> basically thanking her. <laughs> I love the scene where she goes to say something nice to him. And she's like, he is the key to world peace, but he's also a jerk. And she just walks away. And it's like, <laughs> yes. you know, she my, means well, but she's sick. So <laughs> my, my, fa- my favorite is these scenes in her head where she's like, hey, Jamie, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Why don't you come over and meet my dad? Oh, we meet my dad. And then also, and now we have world peace. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm thinking. That's I what love I'm it. Talking about. And I love oh, that good. she talks. That, like these characters, like they're kind of drawn a little like artsy, like crayonish, and that she does all the voices for all the people in her head, like thing going on. It's hilarious. I, one of my favorite parts of the, of the anime. Yep. Uh, so Anya makes friends with a little girl called Becky, a little rich girl. Uh, they are, she is kind of looked down upon for being just the daughter of a therapist. Uh, and Damien who like starts off with, like are you important should i be friends with you and she's like my dad's a what does what she call him feelings doctor feelings doctor <laughs> he's like oh you're a commoner um and so he starts bullying her and teasing her with his friends and she does the mommy mama just taught me to smile she gets the weirdest smile so creepy it's such a creepy <laughs> smile i love it uh, and she does it repeatedly but eventually they get to her they say something that, that gets her and she punches him uh-huh. Now, when Henderson Henderson is because of he him punching the one guy has been demoted to first grade teacher. Uh, he comes over and he's like, "Okay, what happened?" And Anya's like, Shh, "He stepped on my friend's shoe." And at first, she's like, "Oh, he just fell over and fell into my fist, and <laughs> I didn't do anything." Uh, so, one of the things that was hilarious I wanted to point out in the scene is that beforehand. She's just like, I'm going to tell on you that you're bullying me. He's like, no one's going to believe you. How can you prove it? And then she hits him. She looks to make sure he's not. Henderson's not watching. Hits him. And he's like, we're going to tell Henderson. She's like, you have no proof that I did it. (laughs) (laughs) Who's going to believe you? you? (laughs) Um, Yeah. But yeah. And so Henderson's like, oh, she did it to defend her friend. And so he goes to Lloyd. How elegant. Yeah, it was an <laughs> elegant punching. Uh, he goes to Lloyd and he's like, hey, this happened. Normally, this would be like was three. Three, three bolts. Three. But yeah. uh, the, due to the situation, she's only gotten one bolt. And so there's Yor, who's like, oh, God, I taught her to punch. <laughs> and Lloyd, who's like, it's day one. <laughs> day one, and she's one eighth of the way to expulsion. And I have to get her into the honor roll. And they show like the class photo, and their family is just off to the side, like all just like, oh god. <laughs> um, yeah. And so the the we start with the next day. They Anya apologizes. She's trying to make uh, things better uh, at school. It becomes this next thing is she has to apologize to Damien, right? We need to fix this. And, and it's so important that Lloyd has snuck over to the school to do <laughs> spy work there. And when and Anya does want to apologize, she keeps trying to get to Damien, but he keeps bullying her more whenever he gets nearby. And her friend Becky's like, let's not put up with that, and grabs her and will run off. And so Lloyd starts sending messages like, on a mirror with reflected light that says, you should say sorry, carving <laughs> sorry into the hedges, writing sorry on her food as a cook. Oh. <laughs> and I, keeps... I love the one where she's like, I must be reading a different textbook because they're reading about this story yeah. of this kid that's like, I'm not going to apologize because I did the right thing. And then like hers is just like, but then I did feel bad, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Eventually she does confront Damien and She's trying to say sorry, but at the same time, she's hearing the thoughts of his buddies who are making fun of her legs and her horns. I still don't know. They're yeah, head so, dressings. So two things. One is her hair has uh, it comes out into points on both sides. Um, it's the same thing Armitage has. And so they kind of they call that horns. 
Jeremy, no one knows who Armitage <laughs> is. Everybody anymore. knows. Okay, <laughs> Armitage the thirty third. years ago. <laughs> the third, just in case you <laughs> catch it by the name by itself. Yeah. I'm not sure that helped at all, <laughs> but go on. And uh, and then she also has those two little black caps yeah. that look like horns, so double horns. Yeah, they're, they're, so they're making fun of her. So she's crying from the teasing in their heads while apologizing, making her apology look even more sincere. And they've been hinting at it the whole episode, but Damien is falling in love with this girl oh, yeah. because she Got stood up crush. to him. Yeah, it just never happened before. And, and she's so sincere, and he can't take it, so he actually just has to run away. And Lloyd's like... Why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not how this is supposed to work. I, I, you know. I did like that she caught him in the hallway earlier. Like he's got a, a mask on and everything, and he's like the janitor. The, the janitor. But she's like, uh, it's, it, wait, why is he here? <laughs> why is Dad here? Why is Papa here? After this scene, it cuts away to her friend Becky in the hall, just being like. Who called me out here? And because yes. he had kept being in the way that Lloyd created a distraction, she's just so confused. <laughs> that was a funny cutaway. Um, uh, they they turn back to plan A, so they work hard at studying, and it's not getting anywhere. Anya, you know, she's like, okay, maybe I'll just cheat. And she's trying to read their minds for answers, and Lloyd's thinking about, like, this mission's failing, and yours, like, okay, but if I decapitate him, then there's five pieces They're like how many oh i don't know if when i cut the body in parts and it's <laughs> not working um and and anya runs to her room sad and then you're and, and has to have a talk with lloyd and kind of gives him a pulpit and she's like remember to you you're the best dad to, or to anya you're the best dad ever and and he's like man you're, you're really part of this family too they talk about her brother a little bit and then he goes to check on her and She's fallen asleep studying, and so he tucks her in, and uh, just nice family moment. And oh, he, there's this is where he walks out. And he goes, "I wonder what a real family would have been like." Which you know, again, we had this. Yeah, this is the exact same. <laughs> you're you're doing it, dude. Trust me. <laughs> um, but I love the dichotomy to with Lloyd in the very beginning, who's like, "I don't have attachments to anything. I don't like anything." And now there's this Lloyd who's like. Feeling things isn't that bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there was also something really interesting about telepathy that, that I noticed here, and that is just because you have telepathy doesn't mean you can find a clear thought. Right. And this was portrayed really well because when she's trying to read Loy's mind, she is overwhelmed because as a spy, he's considering all these different potentials, all these different possibilities of what he needs to do to, to solve this problem. And it's just confusing. And I've kind of wondered that before. It's never really portrayed that well with telepaths um, that, you know, when they're searching somebody's mind, you might get fragmentary thoughts and you might get uh, just an overwhelming number of possibilities where you never know which one is actually the, the thought that a person lands on. So I was very impressed with that, um, that they actually showed that even just in a comedy anime that's, you know, dealing with telepathy. Um, we see Anya struggle with math, but she does well when watching a cartoon. <laughs> does well is a very subjective term. Yeah. She's like, I have two eighths of a, of a clip yeah. of how, bullets. How many bullets are in a gun? Eight. <laughs> two of eight. Well, he has two left. It's two eights. He's like, yes. And I'm like, well, that's one fourth, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, she makes that mistake in the next scene. Yeah. She does. Mm -hmm. Yep. He uh, Lloyd is this is a great scene. He's sitting with Sylvia, and she's like, "Hey, yeah, we're anticipating she'll be on the honor roll in four months." And he's trying to pick up his coffee, and it's shaking so bad. Like, oh my god. <laughs> she's like, "Your deceptive skills are waning." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could um, imagine her getting eight demerits in two months. <laughs> we we see a man at um, yours workplace get arrested by the secret police counterintelligence, and he's taken away. And then we're we had just seen it in the last episode. Uh, Yuri found out his sister is married. But she forgot to tell him. Um, 
And so, but then we meet Yuri for real, and he is actually a part of the secret police and an interrogator. And his main objective, as we, he would find out from him inter- interrogating this guy, is that he's hunting Twilight, specifically the, the spy Twilight. Number one spy in the West. He wants to catch him. He is his number one rival. So we need to talk and, about Yuri. And he hasn't told his sister about his job because right. she doesn't. he doesn't want her to worry about being in such a dangerous position. Right. So your guys' thoughts on Yuri. Uh, I was hoping we'd get more time with him. Um, he is a serious danger to everything. Um, and I, I, you know, Jeremy made a good point earlier. I'm not sure if it was in the pre-show or earlier in here. How to write compelling secrets between characters that the audience already knows. Um, and dr- writing that drama is pretty it, I could only imagine it'd be pretty difficult and they do a pretty decent job with this particular um, scene of, you know, uh, Yuri coming to visit them for the first time. Um, but we'll get into that when we get there, but Yuri as a character, um, it's interesting that he followed a similar path of his sister that to protect my, sibling i'm gonna go into the most terrible line of work (laughs) i could think of doing Uh, (laughs) but yeah uh he's he's an interesting character and uh, like i said i I was hoping that he'd be in it more i thought it was weird he's got a sister complex i mean it kind of works but at the same time it's just it's always weird seeing characters like that um but there's something he brought to it. You said that he's a serious threat. I 100% agree. It changes the tone of this anime when he is present. Up until this point, it kind of felt like a, a slice of life with a bit of action and, and a lot of comedy, right? But there was no serious threat to these guys. There, the most serious threat was family disintegrates. No deaths. But when Yuri's involved... We've got deaths and we've got like the worst possible way for the family members to find out who each other are. Um, I'll have you ex anyways. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Right. And so that brings like this. There's all of a sudden uh, a real um, something real is at stake. And I know it's it's weird to say that because having their family fall apart would be real, even though they are a contrived family. But this is like life or death. Everything that uh, Lloyd has been saying up to this point about, oh, if I make the wrong move, that's death. It's it's absolutely true when Yuri enters the scene. Up until then, it doesn't really feel true. Right. Um, and so for that reason, I think he's it's it's very interesting that they introduced him. I kind of like the story better without him. Um, <laughs> just because I I liked the comedy and I liked everything when it was more light. Having him there, I don't think I like the stakes that high. I mm. think I think it feels more entertaining in the tone it had before. Conceptually, on paper, Yuri is a perfect character. He is a threat to the spy. He is a rival for Yor. And he has a protective instinct as a brother. <laughs> To, to stay involved and be that constant threat. The, the, the love competition and the brother thing being in the same character, though, ruins it completely for me. I, it's so, it was weird. It was yeah, weird. That's very weird. Um, man, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> I, just, I love that the women, the gossipy women, called it out because they're like, oh, do you have a hot brother? Yeah, you do. He's really hot. Wait, he's likes his sister ew (laughs) um yeah the show is definitely treating it as like he's a weird creep but Mm. i I just wish it wasn't there and i get why because again it it makes him both a a, i want to your to be in love with me and also i'm overprotective and you have to keep me around and involved in the situation all times i'm not an ex-boyfriend that can keep showing up i'm a brother so i can keep showing up i get it I get why logically it fits. The puzzle piece fits. I just don't like the way it felt. 
Nope. Mm -hmm. as, as soon as they came up with the like, oh, will you marry me when I get older? I was like, okay, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Despite like, I I like this episode, but mostly because of the the push it does to the your Lloyd relationship, the whole kissing. You know, I want you guys to kiss and how they react to that. I was, I was like, oh, this is cool. Yuri, go away. <laughs> I don't yeah, want exactly. you in the scene anymore. Get out of here. Especially the <laughs> fact that he, like, charges over to try and stop it. It's like, no, no. <laughs> but the, what you were mentioning about the uh, relationship change, there's also another moment of foreshadowing here where basically Yor says, you know, he's not deceiving me. You wouldn't deceive me, would you? And Lloyd's like, no, of course not. And... You can tell by her reaction to this that it's going to be really bad when she finds out. Like, yeah. it is going to be horrible. She, actually, I, I was thinking of episode 12 when people are, are bad-mouthing Lloyd. She's like, no, I, she has full trust in him. She believes 100% yeah. in Lloyd. It's going to take a You're long right. time for her to recover that. I actually, that's one thing about like when you do have foreshadowings of scenes like this where you know that a couple is on a trajectory eventually to find, you know, uh, good resolution. Like they will be, I'm, I'm assuming they will be shipped. And, but you know that for the sake of writing an interesting story, there has to be conflict. So there has to be this horrible event where there's a falling out. And I just, I don't know, I always hate that. When you can see it coming, uh, it just... I wish that you could skip it and still have enough good character development to just get yeah. rid of that rocky road. It's yeah. so unpleasant. Uh, it, it it really bugs me. It, it'll, it'll really depend on how they play it out. It really bugs me when people just won't talk <laughs> and that yeah. creates like an artificial bumpy road. Like if we had just sat down and said, look, here's what I did. Here's why I did what I did. I need to lay out my cards on the table. I was a spy. I had to give it a secret. You're an assassin. You had to keep it a secret. Mm -hmm. Like there could be mature conversations that like, but so many things for drama will be like, oh, I don't know what to say. I'll keep lying and see how that works yeah. out. And, oh, come on. Adults don't do that anymore. Like, most mature people at this point would just be like, okay, honest truth. Cards on the table. Here I go. Yeah. I think. I've always thought that. All right. Yuri comes over. Uh, he shows up late, so he doesn't get to meet Anya. Probably for the best with his thoughts. Um, <laughs> and... Yeah, he's here to no one's good enough to marry my sister. I'm going to get rid of this guy. And Lloyd's perfect in, in every way. He cooks perfect food. He has all the right answers. And and Yuri brings over some wine. <laughs> and Lloyd's like, Yuri, you can't have any. She's like, yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> but Yuri starts he's, he totally starts asking him about the wine. Like, oh, where where'd you get this? Oh, I bought this at, at this place uh, um, when I was traveling. He's like, oh, that, I've been there. You went to... This guy, yeah, I got it from this guy. And it cost this much, or how much did it cost? It cost this much. Oh, oh, great. And then Lloyd's like, oh my God, he's uh, secret police, because that's straight out of the secret police book. And by the way, they've raised their prices by 100 bucks because the last harvest was bad. I know the true story of this event if he had bought this bottle, but he's given me the playbook. Um, so that's how, again, this is this is Lloyd when he doesn't have a blind spot, but yet here's an assassin yeah. sitting next to him. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yuri rages, freaks out, screams, demands of uh, they. Your and Lloyd's hands touch, and they kind of get embarrassed. And he's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! You've been married a year. What's going on with that? Uh, I want to see a kiss." And and they both get flustered. But Lloyd's like, "I've kissed like lots of women. This is my job. I do this. What? A, what okay, I'm, I'm just gonna kiss her. I'm just gonna kiss her." And then the episode has the audacity to end. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the next episode starts. Yor, who's freaking out, decides I can do this if I drink a bottle of wine. So she drinks all the wine. So she's super drunk. And then she does pushing him down on the couch, pulling the hair behind the ear, like very well animated. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> but then the show has the audacity to have to do the OP. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like really leading you on. <laughs> no, this isn't going to happen. Just, just kill this, hit the kill switch, do it already. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, then the episode starts properly. Uh, Yor actually freaks out and goes to slap Lloyd. Yeah. But Yuri is also rushing forward to stop this from happening. Cause he can't stand the idea of seeing this. 
and Lloyd dodges, and so Yuri takes the hit, flies into a wall, blood spurting out of his head, and he starts crying, and Yor goes over and slaps him again. Uh, but Lloyd comes over and he grabs them both. He's like, don't worry, I'm going to protect your sister. I care for her very deeply. And Yuri's like, I'll never like you. Uh, I'll have you X, well, whatever, bye. And he leaves. Yeah. If you ever make my sister cry. If you ever make my sister cry. Which, foreshadowing again, right? Yep. Um, it's a wonder that Anya didn't wake up. And I know that they shift, they switched over and showed her for a second, like stirring. But, I mean, with the impact into that wall, the constant screaming, like, that was just very difficult to you, believe. You don't know how children sleep then. Really? Uh, there, there's there's some kids that just, sleep you know, anything. a bomb could go off next door and wow. you know, just sleep through it. I Quite do good. like that she's sleeping. She's like, no, mama, don't kill papa. <laughs> yes. Again. Okay. So you know how earlier I said she's an Esper and we don't know what her abilities are. Is that precog? Uh, it's hard to know with her because it could just right? be her imagination too. It but, could totally yeah. be her imagination, but I could totally see that as being a scene in the future where she's like, no, mama, don't kill papa for reals. <laughs> All right. So um, Lloyd starts to get suspicious that maybe your knows about your being the secret police and all this was just to get close to him so he plants a bug on her collar and he's he's kind of back to his distant spy self and anya's picking up on this and yours freaking out because she's like i i i'm failing as a wife i'm not doing whatever he needs me to do which is weird because it's a fake marriage uh, yeah. but she cares and she doesn't want to be a failure so she's upset. So this is where Anya calls him out. Like, you two quit fighting. Get along. <laughs> and then You'll... she has, oh, I love it how she always says, yep. <laughs> like after, whenever she's done talking to you or she agrees with something, it's always like, yep. <laughs> and so she does that at the end of that, too. She gets on the school bus. Yor goes to work and Lloyd follows her. And she's crying and talking to her coworkers and asking what she can do. And they're like, divorce him? You could divorce him. <laughs> um, but when she's talking about how worried she is and Lloyd's like, ah, maybe I'm, I'm wrong here. So him and Frankie dress up as the secret police and she has to go to an errand to the post office and they, they stop her and they steal the letter and they're like, this says that you're um, working with the spies and you're named here but look we caught someone last week but they are related to someone in the secret police so we let them go. They dropped that hint. And and she doesn't say anything about her brother, so but then she does threaten to murder them if they come <laughs> after. Her. And, and so Frankie's playing. Is Frankie's the other guy? And he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna get you. We're gonna carry you, and <laughs> smash your face in." And Lloyd's like, "What are you doing?" Uh, but uh, they let her go. Now she's clear of suspicion, and Lloyd meets up with her, and takes the bug, and throws it away, and tells her that he thinks she should just be herself, and that she's a great mom, and she says that. She's really happy she got married to him and they had this nice moment. And Anya's happy that they get back together. I would say that that is how the arc was handled, was that she the end of her arc is just accepting or being OK with him accepting her as she is instead of trying to change, which normally I prefer arcs where the person actually changes. I I like that because it, you know, character, personal growth of an individual but in a way, this is growth. I think self-actualization is usually the goal of a arc, and that can be accepting yourself for the way you are, or changing the way you are. It just depends on what your flaw is. Mm-hmm. Dodgeball. Amazing. A, Best episode. Best it, episode. It's great. Uh, there's a dodgeball episode because the tournament the arc. Daddy. The kids, the kids <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> the kids think that if you're MVP, you're going to get a star. Yeah. So Anya gets Yor to train her. We get this training montage of training for <laughs> my one of my favorite shots of it, though, is the sitting under the waterfall monk style. But it's she's in the shower. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then they go to play dodgeball. And uh, Damien is really into the dodgeball, too, because he also wants to win the star. So he has been training with his buddies and we get. Training flashbacks of them. Uh, J Jeremy sent us all a picture of them on Planet Namek stopping <laughs> the energy ball from their training. 
<laughs> yeah, they, uh, basically, though, the other team has a five foot man <laughs> on their team. <laughs> they call him uh, Bazooka Bill. And and the voice actor is a full grown man yeah. playing this first grader. And they go into his internal thoughts and he's all like, I can calculate every shot. I've perfected everything. And they show his flashback of training. He's like, I've killed 10 targets with one throw. And he turns around. And he's like, Daddy, you are home. <laughs> he runs up to his dad. It's he's so like, good. It's, it's very hilarious. It's, it, and it, the, the episode is basically what is drawn as a grown man. It's a first grader, but it's a grown man pummeling children with yes. dodgeballs. He even, like, if his own team throws the ball, he, like, catches it because, nope, he is the nope, only one that's going to be one. hitting everybody. Eventually, it comes down to just Damien and, and, and Anya and, like, a few kids. And he, he's trying to hit Anya, but she can read his mind, so she's pre-dodging all his throws. So he's like, ah, I'll throw this throw that turns right before it hits him so anyone who's dodging gets hit. And he, so she just stands still, but he throws it. And there's a kid in the back who's, like, not paying attention who just gets wailed on and goes flying. And I spit out my drink. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, but then uh, Anya falls down, and she's about to get hit. And Damien steps in front of it and tries to catch the ball. He ends up failing and dropping it, but he had saved Anya. And everyone's like, why would Damien do that? Mm. But then... Anya does her super so throw good. that she has practiced with yours. She's training. learned all the <laughs> twist the hips and use the shoulder. I love the imagery because in the forest, you see yours foot go up and like smoke kind of come off it. And then she mm -hmm. just throws this thing so fast that it like turns into a beam of light and just tears trees down. And so yep. here's, here's Anya. She does the same foot thing and just like, yeah, go ahead, Trey. She, yeah, and there's a ton of build up. They show Bazooka Bill. He's freaking out. Whoa, no, it's coming. The super yeah. shot. Everyone's yeah. gasping and like, this is going to work. And she throws it straight into the ground. Guys, <laughs> have you, if you've ever taught a six year old to throw, the timing is always terrible and it's always straight up or straight down. And and I've never seen anything more realistic in my life. And she just throws it straight into the ground. It bounces right into Bill's hand and he just bonks her and it's over. She loses. And and uh Henderson walks up and he's like, No, there's no star for winning. This is just dodgeball. What are you talking about? Yeah. But Bazooka Bill talked about killing her, so he gets a lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the uh, <laughs> Chu try to get a star now in, this, in the 11th episode which is really the end of the, this story because episode 12 is a filler but episode 11 is hey we're going to study we're going to get you a star studying's not working um, they even talk about how if she cheats that'll just make kids hate her and that won't be helpful anyway so now she can't even cheat let's so try like, art let's, <laughs> let's try art uh <laughs> She's terrible at art. They try music. She's terrible at music. They try exercise. She gets tangled. She gets tangled in the jump rope, but she's like, "Papa, I will try my best." So now untie me. <laughs> <laughs> so they try. He decides community service. Community service is the thing. So they go to the hospital and they volunteer to help with things. And eventually they get kicked out because Anya's so destructive or lazy. <laughs> hey. They're like in the library stacking shelves, and she's in a corner reading manga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, they get they get kicked out. Um, but while the, while they're leaving, we see a kid who's got a broken leg, and he has to go to um, therapy in the pool. He's going to do some swimming, so for some physical therapy. And his he's told to go change, and his um, therapist goes to change, but he doesn't. He wants to test to see if the water's cold because he doesn't like cold water. And he tests it, and he falls in, and he and no one sees. And Anya can hear his thoughts, and she's like, "Oh God, I should, I need to tell somebody, but I can't tell because they'll know I hear thoughts." So she's like, "I really want to jump in the pool." <laughs> she just runs off down the hall, and she she runs into the pool, and she sees the bubbles, and she jumps in after him. She's trying to swim to him, and she can't reach him. But Lloyd had followed her. He jumps in and saves them both, and everyone thanks her. And and Lloyd points out, like, "Yeah, most." 
drownings nobody sees happen because they just kids dr- drown silently. They just it's so quick. That was a, that was a good fact to point out, Lloyd. Good, mm-hmm. you're a better parent than you think you are. Um, yeah. So, but because of this, Anya gets a star. She's the first kid, fastest kid to get a star in her cl- uh, in the school history. Mm-hmm. Everyone fastest is jealous. kid to get a lightning bolt too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she's one for one. Yep, <laughs> it's a yep. race to the first, first one to eight. Yep. Um, and so yeah, she, she she talks with her friend. She's like, "You need to ask for something." And so she decides to ask for a puppy because it because also Damien has a puppy. Maybe they could have puppy buddies. So she goes and to then ask, they can meet have their dads meet and then they'll go over and then we'll yep. world peace. World yep. peace. <laughs> so she asks for a dog. And she's hearing their thoughts, and Lloyd's like, yes, a spy dog. (laughs) (laughs) Gather information. That would be very helpful. And yours, like, dogs can kill kids. And, like, imagining dogs ripping kids to shreds. She's like, a little puppy? (laughs) A cute puppy? And Uh, then she imagines a dog with a knife in its mouth, like, cutting her throat. (laughs) Yeah. What? Uh, This this was really interesting because up until this point, we saw a couple of scenes where Anya didn't pick up words, but she picked up images. But I thought that that was just, you know, Anya's imagination of what the words would depict because she right. pictured a gingerbread man. Right. So the decapitated and dismembered body might have actually been an actual body. And in, in, seen it as a yeah, but she saw it as a ginger man, um, gingerbread man. <laughs> 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 this one has a soul. That's right. <laughs> um, and so, but in these, like we see actual dogs, and we see, uh, and there's sometimes no words accompanying them, especially with like Damien, right? When she sees Damien, and so I was wondering if this is where she's seeing actual images in their thoughts, which is yet another reason why I'm like I'm thinking. Her abilities aren't just necessarily reading word thoughts or hearing someone's voices in their heads, because um, the show starts from this point. It keeps doing that regularly. That is a that is a plot thread we need. We actually need to get into all of their past because we need to know what was the experiment, why was the experiment mm-hmm. on Anya happen, is it continuing to go? We need to uncover that. Lloyd, we only get a little bit about Lloyd's backstory, but we get like the reason he's a spy is war killed his entire family and he's dedicated to preventing war from ruining more children's lives. Um, yeah, we need to kind of get some more info on that. Where did that all, how'd that all go down? We've gotten a lot more of yours, but again, we need to know who she's working for, why, Mm -hmm. what their, their agenda is. So there's a lot, there's a lot there. There's a ton of potential here and Mm -hmm. and a lot to unpack. Okay. Just please don't spin your wheels. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we get a shot of a bunch of caged up dogs, and especially one dog, and then we see a flash of the Forger family, and then just the, the end. This dog is going to be an important character if you've seen the trailer for season or part two of the first season. Um, but again, we're done with this storyline and going to a filler episode. So I haven't seen the trailer, so my uh, understanding of the dog is only the speculation I have based on what we saw in that episode. I think the dog is also psychic. Um, I don't actually guess. know. I just know that that dog's going to be a character. Because they said that these dogs were people have been messing with them. Yeah, they did say and that. And they're all supposed to be super smart. And so I think that might have been what that dog was seeing. Like it was tapped into their family. I'm not sure how. I don't know if maybe they're there looking for a pet right now. And so he sees them or what. But that's my speculation on that situation. So episode 12, we'll do it pretty quick, but I just want to say it's a filler episode, but it's exactly yeah. what I wanted from the show from the start. <laughs> and please, more of these, uh, because it's Lloyd is becoming so tired and overworked from all these extra missions that he's now kind of becoming a absentee father. Um, Yor obviously feels bad for him. She's not like minding, but he comes home from one of these missions and hears the neighbors gossiping about how, oh, that, that family's not doing so great. He's always late and he's always not there. So he's like, okay, we got to do a family outing, even though he looks half dead. So they do a family outing the next weekend. He's even more tired, still been doing missions. They're going to the aquarium. Um, he makes sure the neighbors see them leaving. And on the way, he gets given another mission. He's like, no, no. Operation Strix is more important. I have to do this for Operation Strix. I have taken my daughter to the aquarium. 
And she's like, oh, that's where the mission is. Perfect. You could go to the aquarium. He has to get microfilm out of a penguin. Because, <laughs> you know, this is a very serious spy show. Uh, bad guys have put microfilm in a penguin to pass it from one, one bad guy to another. He needs to intercept it. And, of course, this their their biggest show is 200 penguins. So like, yep. it's, not, it's not even going to be an easy thing. So when, when they get to the aquarium, their neighbors are there. And you're being like, yeah, we need he had told them we need to make this family look good. She's like, hey, come along with us. Come watch everything. And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they, they get him to the penguin exhibit. And then he goes and there's a rookie new employee. And he steals his identity, steals, uh, makes a mask of him, ties him up. And he goes to feed the penguins, eventually gets this penguin, gets the microfilm. A bad guy shows up. The bad guy gets away so that he can get the microfilm. Uh, you can get the microfilm. But Anya was watching. She sees the bad man running away, and she runs up and she grabs him and screams, "I'm being kidnapped!" Which Yor hears, <laughs> who had lost her child, and Yor puts the man into the ceiling. Yeah. And, and Anya goes, "Wow!" <laughs> in English, "Wow!" And then a couple in the background walk by and go, "Wow!" <laughs> yes. English, it happens twice, and I laughed both times. So it was very good. Uh, and then uh, Lloyd comes back, and he has this giant stuffed penguin. And he says, oh, I've been gone trying to win this penguin. And the neighbor's like, oh, he is a good husband. We thought he was cheating on you here at the aquarium. But he had won the penguin because he had memorized all the penguins' names and got it on the first try. But he says, oh, I had to try so many times to win my daughter this penguin. And that makes you happy. And Daddy's happy. A big liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is also a, had a good cutaway at the end because it goes back to the poor guy that he locked up. And yeah. they're like, you've been promoted because you're so good at this job. You're like, so good at this job. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> so back home, Anya introduces uh, Penguin to her stuffed chimera toy. Um, oh, God, and, and I love this scene. Poor, as part of their spy organization. And they, she has this full on three person conversation. <laughs> and again, it is, it is very much what a real kid would do. Hey, we all need to eat this. Hands it to the stuffed animals. Quickly shove it in your mouth. <laughs> stuffed animals can... I've that seen, so I've been a kid who's done that. I've seen my kids do that. That is, oh. that is true talk right there. <laughs> that is so fun. And the fact that it's always peanuts, even in the intro, like, it talks about eating peanuts or we're all peanuts or something, right? Like peanuts is in the intro too. And the fact that like e there's even a scene like at the end when they go to the candy store and they're going to get candy and you see the package. You can't, it's just peanuts. It's, it's <laughs> it's our our favorite everything food. is peanuts. It's your favorite food. And when you find a kid's favorite food and you get them to eat stuff, you buy a lot of it. That, <laughs> that's a barren move. That is funny. Uh, um, she takes the penguin around on the tour, <laughs> introducing him to the headquarters. And then he's then she's like, oh, there's the secret rooms of mom and dad's room. And she goes to get into dad's room. And, and this is the the dad moment of, oh, my God, you can't go in there. There's like bombs and stuff. And so he's like, Anya, you can't go in there. And then yours like, you can't go in my room either because there's poison. <laughs> uh, and, and Anya's crying. And Lloyd's like, what do I do? I, I, I went too far. That was too much. So he grabs the penguin and he puts it to his head and he's like, I'm Agent Penguin, let's go. And Yor grabs the robot toy they have and she's like, I'm Agent Robot. And, and Anya's like, let's go outside. And so they have to march through the streets playing secret agents. Uh, and the last All shot. All the way to the candy is, store. Yep. And, and the last scene is Lloyd being like, a spy's job is to not be noticed. As every person is turning to look at them and be like, what a cute family. Uh-huh. Uh, Again, this is filler. This doesn't matter to the story, but this is exactly what I wanted to see. Your skills helping out Lloyd's mission, thanks to Anya's intuition and, and being able to put the two pieces together. And, and Lloyd having, you know, to work his spy job while managing this family. That's what I wanted. And I do the school stuff is cool, but this is what I was looking forward to. All right, we come to the end of our episode. It is time for our final reviews. Jason, hit us with it. Um, I had a ton of fun with this. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to have a tough time being unbiased because it was just that heartwarming family um, pulling at the heartstrings. Um, I definitely would have liked to see some other things, but that's just my taste. Um, 
I don't have a lot of concerns, but there was a couple nitpicky things. It doesn't quite hit a five for me, but this is a strong four. Um, I don't know if this would go on like a top 10 list, but definitely worth a watch. So, yeah, four for me. All right. Jeremy, how about you? Um, I loved it. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. I anticipated a lot of like just pure slice of life with a bare hint of comedy. Um, but the comedy was really high in it. And the believability of the characters, aside from the nitpicks um, <laughs> and and some of the inconsistencies of, of Lloyd's ability to deduce Yori, um, and among a few other little nitpicks about their characters here and there, they were very believable. That sounds like a lot of caveats, but it's not really that many. Like, if you're watching the show it doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the show that much. Um, and Anya was just a blast every step of the way, watching her behavior. Her expressions were fantastic. Um, and having enough supporting characters that also were interesting and not um, not just there as foils, not just there to be played off of, um, was really cool too. I also want to give this a four. I, I'm right there between a four and a five, but I do think that there's enough things that they could have adjusted to find some way to give Lloyd a more reasonable explanation for why he's not picking up on Yuri. I like your guys' headcanon, but um, I think they could have done something in real canon, too. It would have been nice. I, I'm actually torn between a four and a five. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you guys. I'm going to go five. I thought this anime would hit a top ten list for me, but it, it doesn't. But I do think I don't have any issues with it, and I'm looking forward to watching more. And I do want to do the second core on this podcast. Um, it's contrived in its setup, but you know what? When six friends owned affordable apartments in New York, that oh, was God. contrived. When a bunch of people... <laughs> all able to spend all their time in a bar that's contrived when cousin larry and cousin balky had to live together that was contrived comedies set up with contrivance i'm fine with that good luck with that reference everybody yeah, um i don't know that one <laughs> yeah. uh, no honestly i am jason's like i don't want to be biased i want to be biased please more shows about dads and moms and and yeah anime mostly needs to be for high schoolers i get that that's fine but it's nice to have a little bit of uh, something different it's nice to see an adult woman in an anime an adult man uh who when they fall in love it's like oh this is an age appropriate thing for them to do yay <laughs> yeah um and, and i laughed i laughed hard uh, i watched this with my family it was it was it was a good one and i enjoy the action we didn't talk much about the action scenes but they are drawn really well they're kind of rare but um, the animation is beautiful when they go into those those uh, sakuga moments so uh, i'm giving it a 5 it just i don't i i'm close to a 4 though so hopefully hopefully my worries don't come true and my wishes do but I will let see where they go in the future. All right. Our next anime is Love After World Domination. So we'll be watching those 12 episodes and then coming back to talking about it here on this podcast. And again, we will be on Simping for Senpai podcast as, as guesting to talk again about this anime and going even deeper into our thoughts and feelings and probably learning a lot more about this anime than we know at this point being Bacchus. If you have and thoughts, speaking, go. okay, go. fine. Hey, plug your thing. <laughs> hey, uh, if you want to see three Bacas try and make their way to help Megaman find her explosion magic in Elden Ring, uh, hit us up on YouTube. It's already one of our most popular videos on YouTube. But yeah, you yeah. need more plugs. Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. If you have thoughts on Spy X Family. Please feel free to reach out to us on our Twitter at Baka Podcast or our website, theanimebakaclub.com, has a way for you to contact us. Or you can leave a message wherever you found this podcast, and we will review that as well. Thank you for all those who leave messages. We always love to get those uh, and continue our discussions from here. 
Uh, we actually really do. We we start talking. Uh, you guys bring up subjects, and then we start arguing again, and we bring those over to your conversations. Uh, it, it's always fun to do. So thank you for those, and we will see you next time. Let's say goodbye. Thanks for listening. Anya also helped out with the podcast. Sayonara. <laughs>